What's up, everybody? All right. Hello, folks. <laughs> Hello, folks. Uh, I hear folks. Uh, we've talked about that. I, I do hear it. I hear it every day. Yeah. Well, uh, President Biden says it all the time. Yeah. So it's going to be It's going to be around. around. I think we started it. He probably <laughs> listens. Uh, he's like, I just like to get a break from... <laughs> Uh, welcome everybody. Uh, glad you guys are here. Uh, as always, I'm here with Aaron Weber, Brian Bates, and, uh, we are, uh, uh, we, as usual, start with the comments. Uh, we're recording this episode early. Uh, so the comments about last week episode, uh, on New York will be read on a later date. We're a little here and there cause we got with the States, as you have seen, uh, we're kind of doing it with comics coming in town. And so it makes it kind of fun. Good way to have uh, a lot of my buddies on and uh, talk about their state and just be funny or whatever. And uh, we did a long one with Giannis last week. Mm. So see, we're getting read. <laughs> it was a real long one. But uh, so yeah, so we so we plugged that in, and then we got some other ones, some moving around. We will get back to uh, normal, I think. After this, I'm gonna try to get back to normal. <laughs> Uh, we're going to see, uh, so just so y'all are up to date on what's going on, uh, Derek Visser, Visser, the co-host definitely earned their seat at the table today. I literally had coffee coming out of my nose when Nate said, all right, this has nothing to do with anything but chives and somehow Biff and Aaron Charbroll <laughs> managed to steer it to the topic of the day. Nicely done. Uh, what after the chive thing? Because then y'all got it back on. Well, I don't even think we got started yet. <laughs> but I don't know. I think I think I said. Uh, you know, you talked about how you sprinkle chives on everything in mm -hmm. your job, and I said, oh well, that's we're talking about odd jobs today. Yeah. So maybe that's oh, what he meant. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yes, they got it back. Sorry, <laughs> just trying to bring some comedy to this podcast for <laughs> once. At least uh, something's being brought to the table. <laughs> Tim Wiegan, Wiegan, Wiegan. W-I-E-G-A-N-D. Mm. I've never met someone who expresses exactly how I feel about onions and chives and tomatoes, for that matter. Until now. Great work, Nate. I like the work you're doing as a food critic. Maybe an entire episode on foods that everyone hates. It's not a bad episode. That is a really good idea. That is a good idea. Mm. Well, we might do it this episode. No. Sounds like uh, you have a customer for your restaurant one day. No tomatoes, no onions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think about it. I'm going to go try it. Uh, you know, we always talk, I'm going to try it on stage, see if it works. Some, I, I want to be curious. I haven't seen a bunch of stuff here that I think I've done on stage yet. And I want to, that one, I, I that one's like fun and silly. Mm -hmm. And uh, see if it works in the live format. Uh, get a real, get a real taste then. Jason Hughes, your chives take is exactly how I feel about lemon and iced tea. Why do they assume I want a lemon in there? I don't want super weak lemonade. Assume we all don't want it and save some money. Give it to the people that ask for it. You guys are the best. Uh, I agree that, you know, yeah. a big lemon lime kind of thing. It's, it's more up north. Diet Cokes. You mm -hmm. have to go. They, it doesn't really yeah. happen here. But when I moved in, when I was in New York and Chicago, they just bring lemon with a, or lime mm -hmm. with a Diet Coke. And you have to, you have to say it, no fruit. Hmm. Which is like, I feel like they're making you say something. Yeah. And then as soon as I'll take the lemon out, I set it down next to it as an obvious statement mm -hmm. to go, I don't want this. And then when I get another Diet Coke, they bring the lemon back yeah. in. I'm going, what are you? And then I put the second <laughs> lemon next to it. And then I'll do one more to see yeah. if they just, you know, it kind of becomes a game. I used to like the Diet Coke in the cans that came with lime and lemon. Remember yeah. those? With a little yeah. lemon twist. A little lemon twist. Those are good. Well, that's what a lot of people <clears throat> like, and that's why they do it. But it, I, I it think, shouldn't be the default. Yeah, I sure. agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. Just bring a plate of lemons, and if someone wants it. Uh, but I, I get more. I get tea having l like lemon with it. I think, but Diet Coke to me no. is there's no way enough people unless mm. they're doing it up north. That's a north thing. Travis Andrist. When Nate, Bushwhacker, Bill, and Aaron started the episode of Odd Jobs, I thought there would be more interesting, funny, odd jobs. The jobs brought up were just basic jobs. The oddest jobs that I ever got paid for was trapping skunks for an elderly neighbor. The neighbor lady wanted me to just drown them, but I couldn't do that. <laughs> Instead, I wouldn't drive them five miles in the forest 
Instead, I would drive them five miles in the forest and let them go. And yes, I was sprayed a time or two. Well, yeah, Travis, <laughs> we didn't live. <laughs> I don't know where you grew up in just the wilderness. <laughs> that's very funny. I mean, that's that lady just saying, just drown them. Yeah. I don't know, just drown them. I mean, you know, it's like she's trying to build a serial killer. <laughs> that's, I would imagine that's your first step. <clears throat> yeah. Just try to drown, drown somebody. I would kid. try to make I mean, the kid. kid. Uh, okay. Me, yeah. Like you, like animals. That's the, uh, they interviewed uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. I, mean, I might have talked about this. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey Dahmer's dad on, a, on a, like 60 minutes or something at one time. And they asked him, they were like, did you do anything as a kid? He was like, you know, he killed some animals and stuff like that. But he's like, nothing that. <laughs> and it was always like, uh, it's yeah. It's just kid stuff. I mean, dude. just yeah. like kids being kids, you know, yeah. hanging squirrels, stuff like that. <laughs> I, I mean, I, you know, no, I, no. Besides that, I didn't see anything. There's a, there's a ton of signs. But I, that's always like, you never, in the moment, there's definitely probably been way more people that have killed animals for yeah. no reason, yeah. Yeah. not become serial killers than, than yeah. have. But it is, you know, you're doing it alone. You're like, no friends there. There wasn't a group of kids. You know, it's like you at least want some friends there. Right. Yeah, right. The fact that he's doing it alone and likes to do it alone is uh, kind of the problem. Yeah. Justin, Justin D. Flitch. Being the new guy on the job, I was given the simple task of delivering a moving truck to a building that was just down a few streets. While trying to find parking underneath the building, I rammed through the hanging sign that said eight foot max, eight feet max, getting the truck stuck underneath the building, no, knocking out the sprinkler system and blocking people from getting to their cars. It took seven hours to repair <laughs> the sprinkler lines and get the truck removed. Thanks for reading. This podcast is the best thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> I like that. I mean, Justin, he's still. There's a. Oh, that's the picture of it. That's uh, Justin's work right there. Wow. <laughs> I mean, just you just drive it, you have no idea. And as it hits, yeah, you just think, ah. Oh. And then you probably snug it in there more if you try to back it up. You try to do something. Yeah. And it just yeah. kind of gets it in. I think you just got to try to go through at that point, right? Let me just finish it out. I don't know if it's going to let you. Like yeah. he's hitting the mm -hmm. thing and I mean, the sprinkler system. That's a <clears> mess, <throat> dude. That's a whole thing. I worked with a guy at the TV station, sports guy. And he was anxious to get back to the station to get his – he was live out at a baseball game, Greer Stadium, the old sounds baseball game, whatever. He was anxious to get back to the station to get the stuff on the air. For some reason, he didn't have a car. He was waiting on his guy or something. So he decided, I'm going to jump in the van, the one that has the – Oh, yeah. <laughs> that goes all the way up. The satellite that goes all the way up. Yeah, it's not a satellite, but yeah. it's like that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it wasn't all the way down like it's supposed to be. And he went underneath a bridge oh. and just took the thing out. That's got to oh, cost so much man. money. Oh, man. Yeah. Thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah. But those kinds of things must just happen all the time in jobs like that. Or not that specific thing, but like truck drivers get in wrecks all the time, right? I yeah. Mean, and you have to oh, be yeah. licensed. He wasn't licensed. He shouldn't have right. even been driving this. Van. Oh, yeah. yeah. You have to have a special license to do it. <laughs> yeah. But it does happen a lot. Yeah. Truck they, does he get. In big trouble. He or didn't fire? get fired. He got reprimanded. He got fired yeah. later. Yeah. But, yeah. Oh, he got fired later for for other stuff. Yeah. My job in college, I worked at a uh, the OIT, the department that handled all the computer clusters around campus. Yeah. And basically, you get called if there was a printer jam in a dorm, but that meant you got to have a golf cart on campus, which was like the coolest thing yeah. to just ha have access to a golf cart. And this poor girl that I worked with. It was like her first day drive. She just crashed this thing into a building on campus right between classes where hundreds of people are walking. Yeah. Out. It was just so humiliating. Yeah. And then we didn't get to drive the golf carts for a while. They're yeah. like, we got to look into this. Was, she just uh, went into the building. She, Everybody I, saw it. I, oh, dude. It, it yeah. was like a glass yeah. side of it crash people came out yeah and then all the classes got let out as she's standing out yeah there, like, uh, yeah just please don't let out and mm. everybody yeah then the bell rang you know mm. there's a bell in college no okay <laughs> uh 
<laughs> at Ball State. Yeah, Ball State. We had a bell. They taught us how to ring the bell because they said you guys will might be in charge of bells. They just figured if you go to community college, yeah. you're going to be around bells more than the more than the average person that doesn't go to community college. Um, I watched a video this weekend of a guy with a golf cart and he this old man trying to fix it in a garage and it backed up into this door. He had like a French doors and it just goes through it and he gets it forward and you see him just sitting his hat off just like I was like the he's just by himself and it's like he's looking at that door like I got to go get this door <laughs> fixed it's like a whole thing and then he like touches something else and the cart just shoots off forward and just drives through the rest of the garage <laughs> very funny like just situation you're just alone yeah the idea of being alone when all this stuff happens was is, it the footage from like his security camera or yeah, his garage something like that, or something? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, Ann, all right, Ann, uh, Ann Sinsheimer, Sinsheimer. I love when you talk about golf. I would listen to an entire podcast about golf. I was surprised that you mentioned you didn't mention golfer and super nice guy Brad Faxon hails from Rhode Island. Keep up the good work, well, Ann. I would love to. I'm going to start a pod, golf mm-hmm. podcast one day. Uh, it's my future mother-in-law, I believe. Oh, is that? Oh, yeah. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't mean I don't I don't know if there's another Ann Sinsheimer, but I think that's her. Sinsheimer. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. I like you got a good one. She likes golf. Brad Faxon. <laughs> Hell's from Rhode Island. I mean, I can't imagine, honestly, if I mentioned that anybody would ever <laughs> like <laughs> me and Ann are going to talk about Brad Faxon. Brad Faxon is a great guy. He's uh one of the best putters of all time. Oh, is he really? Yeah. And they always like Tiger talked to him about putter. Everybody talked to him about putting. Uh and but uh i've watched a bunch of videos i didn't put them anyway me and ann watch <laughs> peggy in dallas i'm a faithful listener i have taken time to comment and compliment since episode one but i have to say nate has to stop turning every idea into a golf story <laughs> please give nate this bit of advice enough about golf besides that another great show well peggy <laughs> have you heard of brad faxon <laughs> I mean, goes, one guy said golf is the chives of this podcast. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> I'm a, I'll, I'll start my own golf podcast. A lot of people like that idea. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. And then, and then I'll never talk about golf with you losers ever again. <laughs> Ann can join. Me, Ann, and bring Peggy in every now and again just to balance us out. <laughs> We have Peggy in as a guest, and then she's like, "What's this? I'm on Nate Land." I'm like, "You're on Golf Land." <laughs> That's Welcome. what it's gonna be. Called. Yeah, it's called Golf Land. <laughs> it's all just land. And someone's like, "Is his last name Land?" You're like, "No, no. actually not." <laughs> no. I try to get NateLand.com because uh, I was trying to do it for my website. So my website, obviously, NateBargetzi.com, or but I also have IamNate.com mm-hmm. just because if you do interviews, it was just easier. And I've always tried to get NateLand.com. Uh, but some guy owned, or maybe Twitter or something. Some guy's name was Nathan Land. Oh, really? And, <laughs> and I, then he uh, got it. Huh. So, are you, you buying know. it now? I'm gonna, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna see what we're see if it's up on. there. Yeah. Betsky one six, Betsky sixteen. About the babies left outside in Finland. I currently live in Finland, and this still happens. The grocery store and some restaurants and older buildings are too small to have strollers driving through them. I was shocked when I saw two moms that left their strollers outside of a window and just sat at a table next to the window and had lunch. They live their lives and the babies stay sleeping. That's great. I mean, if it works, it works, you know? Yeah. I'm for it. If that's what they're doing, that's what they're doing. You go, one baby missing, that, that's a wrap, though. So you better <laughs> yeah. hope that all. Uh, but it is crazy. It's, I mean, I guess we we don't do it as if we're just having seen babies get taken left and right. right. Like that's the way we talk about. It. Yeah. Like, right. We're like, yeah, you can't even. You're lucky if you make it out of Walmart with your babies. <laughs> Ryan Schick, Schick, question for bon- uh, for Bonanza. He mentioned meeting his wife through online dating, but I remember a bit he did talking about how they used to date but broke up because they both could do better. Is there some inconsistency here? Inconsistency here, or did they reconnect online, like the couple in Pina Colada song from the eighties? <laughs> we both knew that song because we grew up in the eighties. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we did date for a short time, like eleven years ago, and then we reconnected on Match. So, so there's no inconsistency. No, 
no. Yeah. But you didn't meet the first time on online dating? No. Okay. No, we uh, we knew each other, but then we hadn't seen each other or talked to each other in mm-hmm. over a decade. And then, what's the first line after you reconnect? Like. You want to give this another shot? Or what's, <laughs> yeah. I wonder what the first line is. She emailed me. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 So Nice. Both striking out. <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a funny line. To, when you, what's a funny line to come back to? Yeah. yeah. Good to see you again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like my joke says we both we went our separate ways because we both thought we could do better. Yeah. yeah. That's a great line. Yeah. But your first line back. Um, is hey, we're both in our forties now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you want to revisit this? You gave it a go. <laughs> you gave it a go. Gave I it gave it a go. go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you want to do it again? Nate, you can get nateland dot org for nine ninety nine. I mean, why not? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's dumb. Get it? No. Yeah, yeah. Who wants a? No one wants a dot org. What about dot biz? Yeah, that's but eight bucks. no one wants any of that. <laughs> if he stuff. cancels his ten dollars a month, you could just just. You buy it, Eric. Yeah. You want a dot com? Do people are people becoming more, like more aware of the dot orgs and dot business? I think there are some popular dot orgs. Yeah, PBS dot org. Oh yeah, everybody's popping on that. <laughs> uh, I bought Kanye West for America when Kanye West yeah. had redirected it to my website. Yeah. And nobody, nobody typed that in. I yeah. thought people would be <laughs> typing that in. Yeah, and discover Aaron Weber. <laughs> uh. Any more bonanza questions? <laughs> <laughs> Jacob Braggini. I signed mm. up for a gym membership one time because they had a special monthly price of ten dollars a month. I felt like it was a good it was too good to pass mm-hmm. up. I never canceled it and eventually the card to the account expired. I thought that would end it. Seven years later, I'm trying to get an apartment. And my credit checks are getting rejected. Never carried any kind of debt. Turns out the gym reported me to the credit authorities <laughs> for delin- delinquency. I had to pay like 500 bucks to some shady company to get my name cleared. Get out of it while you can. It's totally how they make money. Get out of it, Aaron. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to do it on the podcast. We need to do it. I'll do it whenever, man. Yeah. I had forgot about it until n- right now. Yeah. So yeah. I'll do it whenever, man. You can call. No, you have to go there. Well, somebody wrote in, a listener said, said that you, you can, can call. call and just say, hey, I'm scared of COVID. Yeah. And they can't be We'd like, have to come do on. The connect. We have to do connecting. You mm-hmm. could just put them on speakerphone? Would it pick it up on speakerphone? Yeah. You want to try it? <laughs> Should we do it? Yeah. I'll Let's call try it. Quick. Let's see what happens. I got to look it up. So maybe go to the next comment. We'll come back to it. Uh, Susan Taylor. Hey guys, love, love, love the podcast. Keep up the good work. I want to cancel my Netflix subscription, but I don't want to do it until after Nate's special airs. Do you have a date? Also, for Aaron's wedding, I think he should have Nate do a reading. <laughs> That's a great uh, idea. Yeah. I First mean, I, core in? Yeah. I think you'd be lucky ends? if I show up, but <laughs> yes. let's just work with that. I think Nate should show up. Uh, I, I, I actually do have a... Uh, <laughs> conflict. Date. Uh, yeah, I have a I have a date for my special, but uh, I can't say it yet. But I will wait. When will this come out? Mm. Uh, no, next week. Yeah. Uh, tenth, I think. I'll be able to tell you. Not if you're listening to this episode, you will know the next episode, and it won't be too far off from there. Okay. Look at March. I'm just throwing that out there. Maybe <laughs> think about March. Don't cancel. <laughs> April, you can do whatever you want. Let's just say that. Susan, April, whatever you want. <laughs> Throw your TV in the yard at April, but please wait until then. Michael McIntosh. Hello, folks. She said yes. Mm. Oh, this is, uh, the, uh, yeah. yeah. My now fiance, Siobhan, went crazy when she heard Nate proposed on my behalf during the Inventions episode. I was just happy you got her name right. The biggest. Thank you to all of you, Nate, Brokeback, Munchkin, Aaron Webfoot and the whole team. You guys really are the truth. You've made my family's year in these uncertain times. P.S. She's already started complaining. I haven't got a ring yet. I said, well, I didn't actually think Nate was going to read it out. Read it out. I love you guys. Michael, get a ring. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I was saying, Siobhan, get out of this while you can. He, he doesn't have a ring. You know, we start telling Siobhan, Siobhan, listen. To, no, he, he's going to get a ring. He's got a ring. Yeah. Get a ring. Congratulations. I think you congrats, congrats guys. Buddy. That's awesome. Uh yeah. It's you really gotta get cool. a ring. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. You have the number? Yeah, I got it when you're ready. 
We're ready. So this is what's my what's my plan of attack here? I just go it's straight COVID. in. You have COVID. You have gal. I, no, I so you can't go. Huh? <laughs> you're you're high risk. You're. Uh, I mean, that's all true. I, I don't know. You you stop me when I'm keep spitting truth at you. All right. <laughs> Listen, I got COVID. I have gout. I you can't got come your in. hat today. Yeah, well, you're I just, a mess. Why don't you just first see if you can cancel without any questions? Then, oh, that's a good call. Yeah. And then go to And then finish. only give them a reason if that. All right, I'm yeah. calling them. And they go, well, COVID. And then they. Plan of fitness, they probably won't even answer. And then and then if they say. All right. There it is. It's ringing. I wonder if they have. Uh... Hey, I'm calling Plan of Fitness. This is Allison. How can I help you today? Hey, Allison. My name is Aaron. Uh, I am a member of this particular Plan of Fitness. I was hoping to cancel my membership over the phone. Okay. So unfortunately I don't think we'll be able to do it over the phone, but we do have other options available for you. If I can go through those with you. Okay. That'd be great. So we do have our facilities open. So you are able to come in person anytime. We're 24 seven and you can cancel in person at one of our terminals with a team member. If you're unable to do that with work or schedules or just not comfortable with coming into the facility, you can always send us a letter in the mail. We would just need to see you or that letter in club by the 10th of any month to avoid any further monthly billing. Um, if you happen to have moved out of state and you're no longer near our particular location, you may be eligible to transfer your account to a location that is closer to you. And then you would have the option to also go in person or send that location a letter. Tell me you have count. Okay. So I the only way I could cancel, I can't do it over the phone. I got to either send a letter or come in. Send a picture of your account. Correct. If I, what does the letter have to say? If it's uh, like, if it's just COVID concerns will keep me from coming in, then the only way is the letter, huh? That is correct. Yes, sir. Okay. Are you getting a lot of people calling to try to do this or am I the, the first one? No, oh. we definitely have a lot of people. Um, unfortunately, whenever we first reopened back in June of 2020, for the first maybe 60 days, we were accepting things over the phone. But things were getting very murky as mm -hmm. far as people making sure that things were going through the proper way. And it was just becoming an issue on not, not even... And got a bit of a talker on there, huh? Uh, they would claim that they called when they really didn't. I mean, and It would be very muddy. Um, so we have begun going strictly back to um, following the per agreement of coming in person or sending that letter through. Okay. Thanks, Allison. I'll send a letter. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. Dear Planet Fitness, <laughs> hello, my name is Aaron Weber, like, like the, the grill. grill. <laughs> I signed up with you for a long time, and I imagined our relationship would be much different than it turned out. Recently, I've gotten gout, and I have trouble walking. My foot hurts from going to get the pin. To write this letter. <laughs> write them a handwritten letter. To a handwritten one? Yeah. Yeah. I'll do that. Handwritten is pretty... I mean, for them to see the handwritten, they're going to think something's wrong with you. Yeah? Oh, yeah. A handwritten Yeah. Letter. They might give you more money back because they're like, this guy. <laughs> this guy doesn't even have a computer. <laughs> There's a good chance they would give you more money back. <laughs> she I'll said things that. were getting pretty muddy. Yeah. She said muddy... Or murky? Murky. Murky, yeah. And muddy. Did she say murky the whole time? She said murky a few times. Yeah. <laughs> she clearly had, like, there's a paper by the phone, like, when somebody calls yeah. to cancel, it just read yeah. this off to them. Yeah. You know? Well, she did it. She did enough where, uh, she did enough where, uh, she's had a ton of cancellations, but you could have called in and canceled if you'd have done it sooner. If I'd have done it, if, yeah. Out the gate. I can't go because of COVID. Mm hmm. But then the letter makes sense because then it's like, all right, that's fine. Just write us a letter. Mm -hmm. Dear Planet Fitness. I mean, what letter do you write? Yeah, that's a what company. I, I'm unclear. What are you supposed to put? How do you know they get it? Yeah. Dear Planet Fitness. You got to write it quick. Or you go just pay February. Uh, I'll try to, re I'll put it on my calendar. I'll write an actual <laughs> letter. If I don't put it on my calendar, then I'll show up next week and you'll be like, how'd that letter go? I'm yeah. Like, I haven't thought about you just it. Because so, you're usually so busy. Uh, 
That's why gonna, your calendar has got to be. It's not an issue of being busy. It's just I'm what's your, what's forgetful. going on with I'm your just calendar? Forgetful, man. What's your, what's a typical calendar? What's your oh, calendar yes. look like this week? Right there. I mean, I got it pulled up. Let's see what you got. I got record <laughs> podcast. Aaron Weber. At oh 3 PM, man, I'm jumping something. around. Yeah, skin appointment. Skin appointment, dude. Going <laughs> to the dermatologist. Two two PM. Capital View. What is no, ca- that's just a meeting? All right, I'm gonna X out of this. Oh, do you have a meeting? Capital yeah, view. I got meetings, dude. Oh, is that about y'all's other podcast that you started? <laughs> <laughs> Who's Capital View? That's, that Caleb, like, that's, that's Caleb's. A, that's a building in uh, downtown. Ooh, oh. two p.m. You just going? So all we know is you're going to a building meeting. Yeah. Let's just say it's a high. You're rise. meeting with a, oh, a you're meeting who, with a high rise building at two p.m. A man with a cape. That's right. Do you even know what you're going to talk about with this building? No, I don't actually. But yeah, we'll talk about it later. Ooh. Oh, it's like private. No, it's not. Wow. It's not. I mean, put then yeah, get that letter written on your calendar. <laughs> Write letter to Planet Fitness. What day would you do it? I'd do it later today, probably when oh, we're done. You put tonight. some time in mm-hmm. tonight. So your calendar reminder will say 8 p.m. Mm-hmm. and it'll go write letter to Planet Fitness, and then you will go and. Lick your pen and <laughs> my dearest planet fitness. <laughs> yeah. I hope things worked out better than they did. <laughs> Dip a little more. Oh yeah. But I never I saw you. I never saw you. The only day I've seen you is the day I walked in to sign up. <laughs> and I did not work out that day. <laughs> did you work out that one day? I signed up online. Dude. You signed <laughs> up, yeah. That's so I mean uh, dude, sign it up. They're like, yeah, we're doing you can send us a text message. Ooh. I mean, we're do SOS. We're do whatever you want. You give us any form of credit card, you can pound tables and I mean, yeah, we'll let you sign up easy to get out, write a letter. Oof. That's yeah. how they 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 got you. Mm-hmm. That's how they got you. It You're worked. Like, it worked. It's a, it's not, I, I'm actually not against this system. Yeah. It's so cheap. And they're like, if you can quit, you can quit. You just got to go do the thing that you don't want to do. Mm-hmm. We're offering it because if, if they, they would, they would probably not have a business if you could cancel by phone. Honestly. That's true. That's People true. are that. I'm, I was the same way. I had, I had a plan of this account for a while that I never uh, canceled, but that, I had my wife go in there with me that's what your that's what wives are for oh yeah just yeah, to get you to do the, stuff like that one of the only reasons they're you have a wife she went in there with you she they go in and fix stuff oh, yeah. yeah it's once you get rid of your mom you get another mom basically that goes in and fixes all your things for you yeah i could still send my mom to get my mom would go get stuff done she would go in and chew out planet fitness get that can oh my mom yeah yeah she gets uh stains out like if you have a tough stain, we yeah. had some pickle juice on his shirt recently. She's really good at that. And then uh, she's always got his. My mom is very protective of us and gets mm-hmm. us gets a lot of things soft. Mm-hmm. She's our fixer. She knows gout treatments. <laughs> she does. She told you to tell gout her. Th- tell her thank you for that. Yeah. Did way. you do it? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe you should do this for gout. I've uh, for working. I've been drinking protein shakes a lot and, and powder and powder and powder before my workouts lately. But finally, I found a way, great way, to get my protein before and after my workouts uh, or after. Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon's released a brand new variety pack now featuring peanut butter. They released peanut butter as a limited edition flavor in 2020, and it sold out three times. Peanut butter has gotten so much love that they've decided to keep it permanent and add it to the best sellers variety pack, which also includes frosty, fruity, and cocoa. Uh, Magic Spoon is zero sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. It's a perfect way to start your breakfast. Uh, just nice and easy. You don't think about it. Go pour your cereal, eat it, and start your day off right. That's what it's all about. That's how you get, that's how you lose weight. I'm trying to lose this gut and I'm working out. But I got to start eating good. This is the best way to eat good. If you mix cocoa with peanut butter, by the way, it tastes like a peanut butter cup. But you do whatever you want to do. That's an <laughs> unbelievable way to do it. Go to magicspoon.com slash Nate to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use our promo code Nate at checkout to save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with, backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. Remember, get your delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash Nate and use the code Nate to save $5 off. I promise. This is, this is if you want to start your day off right, if you're, you, you, it's, it's hard to eat healthy, especially when I wake up hungry, really hungry. 
And uh, it's when I get off this, it, it all gets off the rails. Or I'll skip breakfast. Just eat a bowl, five minutes, you've ate something healthy, and you feel, like, productive. It usually helps the rest of your day eat good, too. So uh, remember, magicspoon.com slash Nate. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. Mm. All right. Uh, so this week, we got we did a lot. I feel like we've already done a lot today. This felt yeah. like eating healthy. Mm-hmm. We, got, we got your Planet Fitness thing out of the way. <laughs> That's right. Kind of. Mm-hmm. Kind of. Yeah, I mean, at least it's a step. That's right. Started the ball rolling. Everybody right. can do an over-under. Did you put it on your calendar? No, no. I Don't put it on your calendar. Don't. <laughs> Let's see. When people hear this, you can't until this episode airs. Yeah. So you got to at least pay one more month. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then begin to think to write the letter. So when so when when people are listening to this, which is next week, uh, you will uh, then you can start the process of writing the letter, and then we will see. People can put guesses of <laughs> okay. how long is it going to take you. Okay. Days. I I I mean. I almost don't want to tell you the date because I think you're going to just pick a date for you're, you're like make yourself remember to do it. No, I'll forget by the end of this podcast. I know. Yeah. So I'm thinking, how long have you had it now? Uh, Since four, Ralphie died? Yeah, three or yeah, four years. Three or four years. Uh, but now it's on your mind to cancel it. So could you, I, I you know. Hmm. I mean, I, I mean, I think I, I, I so bet three and I, and think, years. Mm-hmm. I think if you don't cancel it by February or yeah. March, yeah, I, I think you're in, you're another year. That's probably true. Yeah. Someone suggested, hey, here's an idea. Why don't you just go to the gym and try to get healthy? <laughs> hey, <laughs> listen, that is a good idea. Yeah, but it's not good for comedy. Though it's not going to happen. Where's your hat, by the way? I just forgot to wear a hat oh today, man. Uh, I'm a little off. All right. So I think we could go. I, I think you could be easily another year. I don't think if you do by February, you could do another year. Mm-hmm. I wonder if people can pick days. So starting <laughs> on what day will this be? 10th? February 10th? I think so. Yeah. February 10th. You can you can put your days. That how many days do you think? <laughs> he can't start canceling it until the 10th. Okay. And we're not going to be bringing it up and reminding yeah. you. It's just off your memory. It's going to take me a week to buy stamps. <laughs> I'm going to have to find some paper. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be a process. It's going to be a process. Mm -hmm. I'll get it done. Are you going to write it like he suggested? Yeah, probably. Yeah, (laughs) handwritten. Yeah, I'll do handwritten. The gout? That'd be funny. (laughs) Yeah. Aaron the Gout Weber, like the grill. Multiple multiple things. Should he show it to us before he mails it? I think so. Yeah. We'd like to see it. Mm -hmm. But then, I mean, that that still won't count as, it's still got to be mailed. Yeah. So the the day it is canceled, I mean, <laughs> I, I mean I think it'll be like eighty five days. <laughs> I, it's going to be something weird that's going to make you remember it. Uh huh. It'll be well. You get when you get married. Lucy might, you know, because y'all get married. When we join bank accounts. We join bank accounts. Like that's where it gets solved. So you've been playing Planet Fitness. Yeah, ten. That's where it gets solved. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. So I think it's uh, yeah, May, June. And then I think she gets on. So I think y'all get married in May. She tells you to cancel it in June. You don't. You have a big <laughs> fight about that. And then she says July. There's another fight because you still haven't done it. It doesn't matter because you're like, well, it doesn't matter. I got to wait till the 10th anyway. <laughs> and so I think it's August. I think you have, I think you have two decent fights about it <laughs> of marriage. Because her mother's going to be reminding her. Yeah. That's true. Her mother's listening yeah. in. Yeah. I hope, Ann, you can't, yeah. yeah, let's see what he does, Ann. Talk about it on your golf podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Ann will get in this, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, so this week uh, we have decided, I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Wall Street, stocks, that kind of, you know, I know we, we don't usually talk about topical things, but this is, seems like kind of a fun topical thing. I know nothing about stocks, mm-hmm. uh, or a little bit, I try to follow it. And uh, Wall Street in general, uh, my typical answer when something goes wrong with it, I'm like, well, why do we do we even need the stock market? And that seems like not a good <laughs> way to ask. People get upset about that. <laughs> like, uh, they go, yeah, of course, you, you know. Uh, so, uh, you know, with the GameStop stuff happening, it was just very, very interesting. It's been very, very interesting and crazy uh, with 
I, all that's ha- I mean, it's unreal, dude. It's it's fun. It is very fun to follow. It's very fun to follow. Yeah, and it's you know, it's kind of feels like it's us against them. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, and so there's a lot of us that are rooting for us. So I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm sure someone could be upset. Of, you know, I don't. You know, we always try not to. But I mean, I don't know how you can be upset about this. This is kind of good for us. Yeah, exactly. They figured it out. You think a lot of billionaire hedge fund managers are listening? You think we have a yeah, few? Yeah, I was wondering uh, which one's us, which one's them. Huh? Which side are we on? What side do you think we're on? <laughs> well, I just wanted to clarify. Uh, I'm a big hedge fund fan. Huh? I think you would be. Honestly, I think you you don't like. I think they make some any, good points. Yeah. yeah I, I do believe that you would be on their side. A hundred percent. I believe he is he is pro He's Team just, Melvin pro, Capital, dude. He's pro capitalism. Yeah. He's well, no, it's not pro capitalism. He's mm-hmm. pro uh you're you're very you're pro just like status quo, like don't mess anything up. Everybody just keep letting everybody do what they're doing. Don't ask questions, don't try to solve anything. That's what you're pro. So I think you would be pro then. Mm. But uh <laughs> so Wall Street, you actually bought some of the GameStop. Yeah, a little late. I, I, I a little late, but I I've been following it for a while, and I think I didn't even I don't play the stock market ever. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't even realize how easy it was to do that. Yeah, I just got the apps, and I'm I'm on board, dude. Diamond hands, I'm holding out. Did you know? And diamond hands means you're you're holding hold the stock. Yeah. And so, how much did you put in? Not much. It's just a couple shares. Yeah. of Game stock, and then I bought like like a hundred bucks. They're three twenty five a share. 325 bucks a yeah, share. They wow. were as of this morning. They've dropped considerably already today. Yeah. So I've lost a lot of when money today. When did you today. get you got in at 325? Yeah. Well, Why how did high you did buy it get? so It got up to over 400 okay. at one point. But a month ago it was like $4 a yeah. share. So yeah. it's insane the yeah. the growth. But I I put more money into AMC stock because I thought that was going to be the next one to kind of do what GameStop yeah. did. And that was But they put a stop on it. Did they today? I think they did. Yeah. Yeah. There's all kinds of like, I saw people, Europe couldn't buy. It's all yeah. such a mess. Yeah. But uh, AMC was like, I bought in at like uh, $11 a share. Yeah. It got up to 20 at one point. Now it's back down. It's mm-hmm. just fun. It is when you, you don't have like, you know, like my life isn't depending on whether it succeeds or not. Yeah. It's yeah. just fun to have some skin in the game. You know? Yeah. Yeah, and you bought in at the very highest. <laughs> yeah, I got you're, it. You're, you're, you Super like came late. in at the very end. Yeah. But is it the end, dude? I don't think, yeah, yeah. I, I think this kind of, I don't think it's the end of, yeah, I'm sure. I think this kind of thing will happen more and more. Yeah. I think it's the end of your GameStop. Yeah, is probably. What I think it's probably. So that's the thing. But I think more of that other stuff will happen more and more. Because I think people figured it out, like, oh, you know, we can go against them mm-hmm. and so more people will buy it but i think you're get the game stop at 325 so you just find like you're just like waste that money it's gone but it's like this it's the you're staying maybe, for something maybe man yeah 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 i think I a, get lo- it. I a like lot that. of people are like it's a participation fee mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. a political protest yeah in a way yeah uh and i didn't buy it thinking i'd make a hundred thousand dollars it's just yeah. like i'd like to but if someone yeah. did buy it at four dollars and then it got to four hundred and they sold. Oh yeah. How much money would that be? I mean, so if you how bought you have. how many shares? So, so like the so, the main guy who started all this, Deep Value was his name. Yeah. He made an initial investment back last October. He dropped a hundred thousand dollars in GameStop. Yeah. And everybody thought he was insane, but he was like, "No, I, I this is a value buy for me. I I like the stock, whatever." So he bought. A, it's worth forty eight million dollars now. Wow. The stock is now that was before today. It's dropped considerably today, but yeah. he's post screenshots every day of his portfolio. Yeah, it's forty eight million. Did he get his money out of there? Like, I think he took a little bit out, cashed yeah. a little bit out. But he, that's the whole like mantra of the movement. If he's in, I'm still in. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. what everybody keeps saying. They're like, if deep values in, I'm still in. And people keep posting screenshots. I've got two hundred thousand dollars just sitting here, but I won't cash out. Yeah. Because I got diamond hands. I'm going to stick it to the billionaires. Stick it to the hedge funds. Does he do... So, like, with him, I would hope that he would take a few million. Like, you want him to, yeah. I, 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 they should almost, like, go and be like, dude, take f- take $40 million out and leave $8 million in. Like, go <laughs> take it. Because yeah. if a guy like that, too, 
he could use that forty million for something the same way because that's what I, I heard someone say talked about what they should do because they're stopping these people from buying these things. Mm-hmm is just go start your own trade desk. I don't really know what it means, but it sounds like that. You go start your own kind of app, your yeah. own, like you trade with, you can trade and you can do your own rules until the uh, SEC, Southeastern Conference, <laughs> they they run everything. You know what I mean? It's so crazy. Alabama's good. It just means more. Alabama's good. Uh, so until they come in and like actual laws get passed and won't let him do it or something like that, or whatever it is, mm-hmm. You know, which then you're going to have, it's going to go nuts. Because if if the government comes in and changes laws, people are going to lose it. If they're, you know, it's like you're protecting just the billionaires. I think there's almost definitely going to be some regulations because yeah. of this, which is so funny to see hedge fund managers and Wall Street people be like, we need more regulation. Mm-hmm. That's never what they want. Yeah. But now it's people are using They've it against beat. them. Yeah. yeah. And they They've want gotten some. beat, and they want some, and mm-hmm. yeah. So that that's where I hope that I hope that guy takes. They I would take half. I mean, take four. I would yeah. say take forty, and they keep eight in, dude. That's still yeah. a ton. Yeah, that's a ton. And then you're like, I'll let this eight go. But you took the biggest risk on earth, so you deserve mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to have a great life. And I think he would. This guy seems to be a pretty smart guy if he's figured out. This because he started the movement to get everybody to buy it. Well, he was just he's a big figure in the Wall Street Bets subreddit, yeah. And he was posting about it, and it sort of became a meme, yeah, and, and a running joke to buy Game Stock, stop stock, mm-hmm. yeah. But he was just the first guy in, and he's holding, dude, yeah. Last I checked, I mean, I don't know what happened in the last few hours, but and he's it's holding easy on. now just to buy stock, right? Yeah, you can do it on Cash App. Really? Yeah, you just do it on there. I just use a different app. I'm so new to this. I'm not an expert by any means, but it's fun. Dude. Is there a fee for that? There is a yeah. There's a commission. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, it's it's yeah. Like stocks. So we have stocks in uh, just through our financial guys. Yeah. Uh, I don't really understand stocks at all, or you know, I don't buy it on like that kind of thing. I do want. I was talking to someone. They said the best way is to do it is to put money into like a, that cash app or whatever, one of those apps. And then that way you can like kind of see it and like, mm-hmm. and then do your own thing. And then you just kind of be like, all right, if this money goes, it's going. Mm-hmm. And then it's gone. But you just kind of take chances and you can kind of have to learn it on your own. Yeah. And that seems like the best way. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a pretty, yeah. I, I, but Wall Street in general, I don't, all this stuff seems so crazy to me. Where does this money even come from? Yeah. I don't Where is this it. money like? That's what I don't understand. With uh, what is like, what are like stocks? Like stocks in a company is like you're buying in shares into that company. You don't own it, you're not an investor, but you have shares into it, hoping that it's a successful company, right? Well, you, know, you do own it. It is, you yeah. It's a, it's a share, share of ownership of the company. Oh, okay. Yeah. But investor is different. Investor invested in the company. That's the person that gets the company before it goes public, right? That's one type of so investor, like an yeah. angel investor. Or and then like when that. it goes public, means the whole world can then buy stocks. Right. And that's when. So if you're in a company and then it goes public, that's when the people make the most money, money yeah. ever. Yeah. Yeah. Make a ton. Yeah. And so then you have stocks. But like everybody's got stocks in Amazon or Twitter. Like Apple. everybody. Apple. So it's like I don't understand. How are you ever going to make real any money off of it if everybody in the world that buys stocks has Apple? We're all just keeping Apple afloat then. So they uh, can Apple take this money out? Like this would be like can people take money out? Yeah, you can sell your you can sell your stocks. You can sell your shares. Yeah. And that's how you make money off of it. But also these larger companies it, for, the, for big shareholders, they pay dividends every now and then. So they'll just give cash to their shareholders. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if there's a set timeline, but every now and then they'll just give money to them yeah. as a thank you for being a shareholder. But you can just sell your shares. That's how you make but money. But there's got to be millions of people that have Apple yeah. stock. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of them. So if everybody wanted to buy their stock, it would, or everybody wanted to sell their stock at the exact same time. Yeah, then their stock would tank. Yeah, tank. that'd be a real problem. And then Apple, and is that and Apple takes money from this these people? Yeah, that's that's where when you when you buy. So when you pay if I buy Apple stock, that money goes to Apple to help them run their business. 
Yeah, that's. I think. I mean, I think that's the basic idea, right, Brian? Do you have anything about just like <laughs> generic? Uh, no, I mean, I, I. So there's two ways to do. Well, there's more than two ways, but there's two major stock exchanges in the U.S. There's the New York Stock Exchange and Nasdaq, and the New York Stock Exchange is a buyer seller trade. Like, I got this stock for this price. You want to buy it for this price, and then there's an auctioneer that that negotiates it, makes it happen. And then the NASDAQ, which I don't, I understand even less, it's more about trading. You trade stocks and things like that. Mm. The New York Stock Exchange actually has people still, some on the floor, actually doing the big, yeah. you know, that used to be a big thing. Yeah. The, you ring the bell. The pit, you know. The bell still uh, happens, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, the pit. There used to be all these guys on the floor yelling, and uh, they still have some like that. They're one of the few that actually has physical people on the floor doing the the uh i forgot what they called it but where you actually <laughs> yell and do hand signals and things like that yeah the nasdaq that's like wall street the movie when they would show them yeah all doing that 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 would be how on earth that's a business when you see them all yelling and passing all yeah. that stuff mm -hmm. how's that you're like there's no way this business could be run legally it seems <laughs> crazy it just can't be <laughs> it is just pure chaos you walk in a room just uh -huh. i mean i bet the excitement of being down there's got to be wild yeah like when you get when you get off from work that day i mean you are like you know and the work's done yeah right because it's like closes at 5 p.m yeah can't do anything so the work's done and you're just being going blah, 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 like kind of crazy and then you're just like, oh. And it's all very high stakes, like a lot of money Seems being crazy. thrown around. Well, when they're yelling out yeah. all that, dude, when you watch like, uh, yeah, watching Wall Street, when they're, I mean, they're yelling and they're like, well, hey, they just call people and they're like, hey, I got two, two whatever, oh, and they yell something at them. Yeah. And they go, oh, I got another one. And he just shouts it out yeah. to oblivion. Like who <laughs> yeah. even knows like what any of it is? Like you're just shouting out, like, is there a guy there? What if the guy doesn't hear it? That's what I always thought. What if at the end of it they go, you know what? I don't like. Uh, I didn't. I didn't hear any of that. What if some guy just he goes, he goes, hey, we did pretty good today, and he's like, I thought you called in sick. I didn't even realize you were there, dude. Like it's uh, you were yelling at me too, dude. Fifty people yelled at me. I did not see you this morning. I thought you were sick. I didn't put in any of your stock bets. Or whatever you did, yeah. I did none of it. Yeah. It is it is bad news. You got to write it down or something, man. You gotta, I just yelled it out. He goes, I just yelled it out. I, I wrote it on this piece of paper. He goes, I don't. I mean, do I have the words of the paper? No one even knows where it's at. I mean, how much of that that had to happen all the time back then? Yeah, I, I mean, so. I wonder if there were offices that were just that chaotic and crazy i mean I, I i'm guessing the movies were pretty accurate they had to right? be somewhat accurate i mean i yeah. can't imagine that it was you know if you go i don't think the wall street guys were like no nah, we were pretty chill man like we you see the video like news video of them yeah. and it's they're yeah. yelling and stuff mm. but there, it's just so much yelling i just think who could he, who's how's any of this getting done yeah and then the telephone that didn't even come on until the 80s where they started doing it by phone before then they was just all yelling back and forth on the trading floor i mean just like there's i don't under yeah that's Golly. i mean how could you go in there and you're like i don't know i mean you have to be i guess once you're in it you would be like i get it but yeah i, I bet that had to happen people didn't get stocks and they go i yelled that <laughs> or they said no i yelled it dude you're supposed to put it in he goes oh sorry i'll put it in like or you know he does it yeah later and he seems like it would happen all the time to the most important thing in the world <laughs> yeah the symbols, the stock symbols, if it's a one, two, or three-letter symbol, then that means they're traded on the New York Stock Exchange. If it's a four-letter symbol, that means it's on the NASDAQ. Hmm. Like a symbol. Like Starbucks is SBUX. Oh, That's their trade yeah. symbol. It's not a hard and fast rule. There are some examples of it not being the case. But generally speaking... If it's a small one, two, or three letter symbol. That feels like one that you'd be like, oh, so that's a four letter, that's NASDAQ. They're like, well, not that one. Yeah. But in general, <laughs> like I, I guarantee you I could pick the one yeah. right. that they go, well, not that one. But. That's like the I before E except after C. That's like never true. Yeah. You know? Never, yeah. Snap. I don't know what snap nice. is. Nice. nice. Yeah. But I, before, says, e. I before E except under C and, and or sounds like A and neighbor and way. Yeah. Or e, you know, there's like twelve. The end of it should be just figure it out on your own. That's what the end of that saying should be. You know what? Honestly, just f learn how to spell stuff and don't use this rule. That's how it, I'm free of C except for neighbor and way and find your own 
system. <laughs> and sometimes this you. Is, this is not a good system. This We figured the system out, and there's a lot of new words introduced. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's an old saying. So generally speaking, NASDAQ's the place for tech stocks to go public. Mm. Like Apple, Amazon, Facebook, all those. Uh I bet there's got to be some people that had like Google. Isn't there famous stories of people selling Google or, uh, you know, where they they all went, the guy that, uh, I actually heard him on like Howard Stern interview, like uh, the guy that went public at Facebook, he painted, he was a painter and he painted Facebook's office and they paid him in stocks and they said they would have given him like, I don't know, making this a couple hundred grand or something Mm -hmm. or he could just have stocks. And he, cause, cause uh, he wanted him to paint the whole office. Yeah. He's like this giant building. And so he took the stocks, and then it went public. I mean, now he, he might have three hundred yeah. million dollars. Yeah. yeah, Google did that early on with like their janitors. Oh they yeah, they gave them shares of the company, and now crazy man. And those janitor, wow, mm-hmm. that's pretty crazy. Just well, that's like Bitcoin. Bitcoin was, you know, when you uh, the first Bitcoin was a pizza, and it was ten thousand. They bought it ten thousand bitcoins, which would be a hundred million dollars <laughs> now. <laughs> What does that mean? So I, whatever Bitcoin is, I'm not even sure. But a pizza. Yeah. What do you mean by pizza? He bought a literal pizza. He paid, was yeah. a he paid for he paid it. A pizza 10, delivery bitcoins. guy. It was twenty five dollars. So ten thousand bitcoins was worth twenty five dollars at this time. Uh huh. That'd be three hundred and thirty million dollars now today. Yeah. So, and the pizza delivery guy accepted it. Obviously. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's somewhere. Somewhere. Wild. Huh. Mm-hmm. All right. So then there's the there's a couple of ways main ways to track how the stock market is doing. The Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500, which yeah. I've heard of both of them, yeah. the Dow mostly. I did not know Dow, just 30 large companies. That's all they're tracking. Yeah. Did you know that? Does it move? Uh, no, I guess it really. changes just when someone's in the top 30. Yeah. I don't like, think it's even the top 30. I think they used to choose 30 large companies. Yeah. Mm. They feel like it's a good indicator. And but that's when people go, oh, the stock market's down. And they, they they say, oh, the Dow's down, mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Why it's is it called re- Dow Jones? It was named after two people: Charles Dow, who created the Wall Street Journal, and then uh, something Jones. Something Jones. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Jones. Yeah. So th- so that's what they do. They you look at the Dow Jones, and that's just a general feeling of what's going on. Yeah, and some people if think- that's down. Or it goes up. Like, if that's up, you're like, oh, stocks are doing great today. Well, the S&P 500 is 500 companies. So yeah. To me, it seems like, why wouldn't you just pay more attention to that one? It seems like it's much accurate. Yeah. But they have an equation here for the Dow Jones for how they even come up with that number. It's the stock prices of all 30 companies divided by a factor, which is currently 0.152. So they take whatever huge number is divided by that, and that's what the, the Dow Jones is. For, yeah, they just you know. do whatever they want. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it's all made up. Like it's this. This also feels like a job where you can just say stuff. Yeah, and then people are like, "Okay, is that you know?" You're like, "Yeah, how's the Dow doing?" You're like, "Ah, it's, it took a hit to that." You know, you yeah, just yeah. say like stuff like that, and you're like, "I don't know what any of this means." Well, it just goes to Bitcoin and money in general. It only has value because we all agree that mm-hmm. it has value. Yeah. yeah. So it's like we could just all one day be like, "I, I, I don't accept that." Yeah. yeah, I don't accept U.S. dollars anymore, and you're like, oh crap. Yeah, it's hard yeah. to get your head around. Just well, I have so many of them, and so <laughs> what about if I give you a bunch of them? Because I just don't know. Yeah. I just don't want any of them right now. Yeah. And you're like, but I have. You don't understand. I have different numbers of them. Yeah. Like I mean, the, the number doesn't mean that you're like yeah. this one has a hundred on it. Oh, you just got paper, dude. That's all you got. Yeah, it's just paper to me. It's like Monopoly money. Yeah. It wouldn't, it wouldn't matter. It seemed like it would have been really hard when the first settlers and traders, because yeah. they were trading like furs and right. tools, which everyone gets. That's valuable. To me. And then somebody came along like, we don't have that, but I've got this paper. Yeah. That's so, got to be hard to convince people, right? It's like an IOU, pretty essentially, right? Just, yeah. no, trust me, this well, is my, actually yeah. worth the this much in gold this. or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it was like, yeah, it was this much. In, well, it was gold and silver was the first thing. Thing. Yeah, and before was, money. Yeah, so that would have been traded, and that was a value. And then it, but then I just re- listened to something actually about money, because uh, I was trying to learn about Bitcoin, mm-hmm. and it was like because they had gold, and it was like so instead of having all this gold, and you had to shave off 
some of the gold to buy something. <laughs> I'm almost positive. I could be saying this. This is completely made up. <laughs> but I'd imagine you go, uh, <laughs> you go get some milk at the store and you just got your gold bar and they're like, uh, I don't know, two swabs worth. And you're just like, you just shave it off into a, uh, onto their little just carry a big onto their beeping thing, with, yeah. yeah. And you just uh, uh, is that ah uh, that's a little bit, and you get a piece back and put it on your tongue, and then stick it back on your gold bar, <laughs> and then you walk out with your gold bar and your milk, and it was like just two swipes down. That this yeah. could be made up, but I yeah. bet it happened. You got like point. a valet where you got to tip them. Like, <clears throat> Oh god, yeah. You, that that one you flip the blade over. Right. You don't do the blade because you don't want to dig it in. Right. You want them just some fairy. You just kind of fairy dust, dust them on their on their on their shirt, and you just did the valet. You just swipe it and just splatters <laughs> a little bit on his shirt, and then he has to. Yeah, yeah. He's I appreciate it, man. He takes his shirt off and has to go get it. You have to wear multiple coats. That's why they didn't like it because it was these valet guys were like, you know, we're already parking your horse. <laughs> And now I gotta change coats because you, most of it gets blown in the wind. How was tonight? You're like, oh, it's all right. You just got. It's not a bad night. Oh, yeah. yeah. How'd you do to the goes, Yeah, oh, pretty good night. You know, not bad. Yeah, not bad. Man, just the idea of everyone carrying around a gold bar is hilarious. Yeah, but that's you know, that's what money. Is theoretically that's how it started, right? Right, right. Is it's paper money? It was backed by gold. Was backed by gold. Yeah, yeah. So that's why they hmm. st- they still tell you to buy gold. Tom Selleck. Yeah, they all all of them are still go buy gold because it could go back to gold. Yeah, if the money goes away, was Tom Selleck doing those gold commercials? Or he does reverse mortgages? Maybe uh, Somebody, Fred, yeah. Fred Thompson always did those yeah. reverse yeah. mortgage commercials. Yeah, uh, it's just uh, it's like a certain age group. Gets to <laughs> Wilfred Brimley. Yeah. And those it's two. like no one's on board with the gold. And then you, you hit 70, 75, and you're like, all right, I'm here and I'll listen yeah. to you. And that's that's their market for gold. Because they might have a ton of it. They need to get rid of it. I think Bitcoin, I, I, that stuff is what I'm curious about, mm-hmm. whatever that is. I don't understand that at all. And I wonder if like every step of the way, money and then checks, yeah. writing a check. That's probably hard people to get the head around at first, right? Yeah, checks are about, I think, done. Oh, I know, but when they first started, like, yeah. probably people had a hard time getting on board with that. Like, I don't understand. Yeah, uh, I, I, our credit cards are that way, too, right? Yeah. Any, any kind of new thing, even Apple Pay, people are like, what is going on mm-hmm. here? Because it's just a brand Well, new that's what you, you think about it. You don't really ever see your money. Yeah. It's Not just anymore. a number. And that's, what's, that's what always scares me is you go, well, what if they, you know, this cash app or that mm-hmm. kind of stuff like that. You have your money in that Robin Hood, you know, like went down or like what? If, but what if the app just goes, well, we're not going to give it to you? Well, that's what happened last week. Yeah. Well, right. With Robin Hood. Robin Hood said you can no longer buy GM uh, GameStop stock. But didn't they? And, th- and AMC. And then now you, they're restricting it. You can only buy one. Yeah. They're, it's just like they're just telling yeah. you what to do. It, you know, it's I know. Crazy. But what if they want to take the money? Like, so if the, you have money in this, so if you wanted to cash out of that, you could, right? Yeah. You could say, I want money. You put your credit card down or something in your bank y- account. Yeah, you like, link it to your bank account usually, I think. And then, so if you were like, hey, I want I want to cancel this app, like a gambling app, mm-hmm. right? Like DraftKings or something. Like you just, you get your money back out and then that's what you go with. Uh, so that, that means, but that's what scares me is like with an app like that, it's like you could have all this money in this. And then if something happens to that thing, yeah, then it's like, well, now the money's not there, and you're—it's not like it was ever. You're gonna love Bitcoin then, because yeah. it, it's designed to solve that exact problem. Yeah, yeah. When we when we we're gonna we're gonna talk more about it in a little bit, right? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't last year when the pandemic, mid March when everything shut down. This probably the other things are going on in the news. Six of the top seven one day point gains in Dow Jones history happened March of last year. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. And what's the crazier is the top seven one-day point losses also <laughs> happened last year. Yeah. The market was going crazy during all the pandemic stuff. And usually I'd be the top story, but obviously other stuff was going on. Yeah. What was going on? Uh, so <laughs> March what did you say? The most, yeah, March the, the, the largest jump? 
Yeah, one, not percentage wise, but one day point gain. You know, yeah. in Dow Jones history, and then uh, and when point the loss, was. it was just going fluctuating so yeah. crazy. So people probably made money. Like the guys that are in this made money. Like in those. Oh, time you frames. buy when it dips. You buy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just no one is going to come back. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the Dow Jones now is around thirty thousand, depending on which day. Uh, you're born in December ninety one. November of 91. November, yeah. okay. The, well, I have December, sorry. Yeah, the Dow sorry. was 5,985. March 79? Yeah. The Dow was 3,218. Anybody want to guess mine? <laughs> I don't, was it I around? mean, did they have stocks? Yeah. Back then? I don't know if they... <laughs> was I it think, negative? I think it was uh, trading. I think you were still bartering. <laughs> it was three pelts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two muskets. Yeah. Now, it was actually 5,294. It was higher. Oh, oh really? Wow. Yeah. It was almost as high as yours, but yeah. the Dow... Dropped during like ten year period there. So now it's at thirty thousand. Yeah. yeah. So that's this is the highest it's ever been. Yeah. And we're back to pre COVID levels, probably, right? I think so. I think above yeah. it. The wow. inauguration day this year was the highest it, it hit. So if it got back down to three thousand, that'd be <laughs> go buy. Right. Oh yeah, I think so. Yeah. That'd that be a, that's the idea of it. Is you would go buy a bunch of stock then. Uh huh. Because then when it goes back up, that's what Warren Buffett. Yeah. Yeah. Always does. Mm-hmm. Just when the yeah when there's a collapse when there's panic and panic yeah i think probably in 2008 when everything collapsed all those people just swooped in yeah that could afford to just sit on a stock for years well they know? say that with real estate too like if you buy real estate buy homes like if you could go buy homes during that time i mean you could bought million dollar homes for nothing mm-hmm. i mean not nothing essentially but for people that have money they would have just went down there and you could just bought a home and then you're sitting on, you know, like 30A, which is always is a big vacation spot in Nash. Yeah, it's in Florida. in Florida, but a lot of people from Nashville go to it. I still haven't been to it actually, but uh, I want to go down there. But that like homes down there now are like eight million dollars to buy a home, where if you'd bought it ten years ago, it would have been, I don't know, eight hundred thousand dollars. And they're just because no one was doing it or whatever it was for whatever reason. 2008 would have been nothing. Yeah. And then now it's like. Everybody in Nashville yeah. drives, and that's just Nashville. I mean, that means it's not like it's just Nashville people. Everybody's going there, mm-hmm. so everybody drives down there. Now they have all this money. Yeah, like the Big Short. You love the Big Short. Oh, yeah, I've watched it multiple times. I watched it this weekend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I really like it. It's great. I, I don't say I completely understand it. Mm-hmm. All the yeah, there's a lot of movies I watch that I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, that movie does a I good job of like explaining it. Yeah. Or just being like, hey, you don't even need to understand this. Yeah. I think they flat out say that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like him, the way he's, the way he's talking to the camera and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. It's just a very fun movie. Mm-hmm. It's great. Uh, I've watched uh, Margin Call is uh, a great movie. People might not know it. Isn't that about the same thing from the bank's perspective, yes. though? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard Kevin about Spacey's that. Kevin Spacey's in it. So hmm. You get past that. Uh, <laughs> But he, it's a great, it's a, it's really great. Really? And just like what they had to go do. And it's funny, it's one of them, like the head of the bank or whatever, or something comes in and he tells the person, he's like, so what's going on? Because the guy predicted it, like this was about to happen. And then they fired that guy as well as he laid off. So he was one of the guys that got laid off, but he had like a system in place. And, you know, it's the same kind of thing. Like you guys are getting in trouble, but you get bailed out, yeah. which, and they, you know. And but the guy comes in and he's the boss and someone explains it to him. He goes, "Explain it to me like you're talking to a five year old, like Michael Scott." Yeah, like Michael <laughs> Scott. And he says it, but it's funny that that guy's a successful guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. or supposedly, you know. But and he's probably doing it for the for me watching at home. <laughs> right. I'm like, eh, I'm so glad that guy said that. <laughs> right. You know, I think yeah. it's like, see, those blunt guys are pretty dumb. You're like, <laughs> oh, idiot. They just they, they knew you weren't going to follow along. Yeah. So the short stock, because I, I Googled, like, trying to explain that thing mm-hmm. for a five-year-old, and I still couldn't quite understand it. About shorting a stock? Yeah. I found a great analogy over the weekend. Okay, let's hear it. That I, it, it's, it's not, no analogy is perfect, but this really helped me understand it. Yeah. So let's say Nate, let's say Nate has a residency at the Ryman, and he's doing shows there every night indefinitely. Okay. From now until, for, like, uh, Carrot Top in Vegas. Yeah. And right now he's selling tickets for a hundred dollars a show, but I have reason to believe that that price is going to drop, and pretty soon you'll be able to buy tickets for because you've seen his for act. fifty dollars because I've because yeah. I've seen his act. insider information. I'm like, people get over you know yeah. be over it pretty soon, but right now they're going for a hundred. Yeah. So how can I take advantage of that in the moment if I think it's going to drop? Yeah. So let's say you 
have a ticket to the show that you bought at full price mm-hmm. you paid a hundred dollars for a ticket mm-hmm. i can approach you and say let me borrow your ticket to nate's show i'll pay you interest but let me borrow your ticket for a little bit okay now i have your ticket i can sell that at the current price yep which is a hundred dollars but now i have to give a ticket back to you still mm-hmm. so i wait until the tickets drop to fifty dollars scalp one and give that to you so then i've made Make money the whole bucks. process yeah. now what can obviously happen and what has happened is let's say then nate goes chris rock is doing the shows with me now mm-hmm. now a lot more people are trying to buy tickets that jacks up the price and you owe so now i sold your hundred dollar ticket right or and uh but i still got to give one to brian yeah. and now they're four or five hundred dollars a ticket yeah and, and i've lost all that money yeah so who do they borrow from um, what do you mean? Like the hedge fund, that's what they're doing, right? They're borrowing stock. Yeah. From people that own the stock, you, you borrow it and then you pay an interest rate. And that's why, that's why all these hedge funds of my understanding, and this could, somebody could be listening and be like, this guy's a complete yeah. moron. Yeah. But, He's already but, turned it off. Probably. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Turler. But my understanding is that, that the reason these hedge funds have lost all these billions of dollars is because they're sitting around waiting for GameStop stock yeah. to go back down. But while they're waiting, they're having to pay interest on these stocks that they've borrowed. So they're kind of waiting it out. And like, do we just, you know, chalk it up as a loss or do we wait till it gets back? Low? Okay. Yeah. That was the part I was having, the borrowing. Like, who are you borrowing from and how? So there's a system in place where they do that. Yeah, you can. Um, I mean, if you own stocks, you have an option to to let it be used. I see. Like that. Yeah. yeah. It's all very, it's just the idea of like, borrowing it and then selling it is mm. weird because you don't own how do you sell something you don't own yeah i don't really understand that part of it that's where hedge funds came in that i was talking to my neighbor felix and he was saying, like hedge funds were the problem everything was kind of like normal i don't know felix this it gets felix in trouble <laughs> i was like felix felix started his own bank in his basement <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh but it was saying like hedge. It seems like hedge fund hedge funds were a, a, a big problem. They came in. They just wanted to make more money, mm-hmm. and so they figured out how to make more money was to do this kind of thing where they short. Mm. And that's what those people go on TV. That's what that guy did. They go on TV and they said we're going to short this because people like play that game and they're they're going to sp- on purpose short something. And so it was almost like that guy, the the whoever the Reddit guy is, yeah. bought that GameStop. And was like they're going to come after this one day, and when they do, we will like we'll fight back. Yeah, and essentially that's what has well, happened. Well, that's you, when you short a stock, that information has to be public right now, mm-hmm. so you can see what 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 companies they're going after. And I think that's what that guy did. He's like, I see all these companies betting against it, so I think I if can I got take enough people, of that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, because if all of us bought. Shares we make everything go mm-hmm. up, mm. but it's like what I just don't like the money. Just like it's so it's just all, it's like gambling, right? It's worth whatever people will pay for it. Yeah, you know. So it's all if you think about it too much, you're like, oh, this is all just fake. Yeah, and that's a little distressing to yeah. think about. You know. Yeah. So the worst day in stock market history wasn't the stock market crash in 1929. It was actually 1987. Uh, it dropped. Twice is it twenty two point six percent? So almost a fourth of the value dropped in one day. In uh, what happened? Nineteen eighty seven. I don't know, Aaron. It's a good question. Um, what does it feel like happened? Eighty seven. You were you were rocking and rolling. What do you remember? You don't remember? <laughs> I was in high school. Yeah, you don't remember any, any big in big movements. Mm, I, I mean, I vaguely remember them talking about this Black Monday, but I don't. I mean, I don't even understand what's going on that's now. Kinda, so I'm sure not going to know. What honestly, seven. that's like kind of relaxing to hear that it's the biggest drop ever, and you're like, I mean, I kind of remembered maybe people talking about yeah. it, but yeah, you I remember, wasn't out on the street in a food yeah. line, you know. Do you remember hearing about people jumping from windows to their death when the stock market crashed in 1929? I think so. I've, you know, oh, man, no. you've never heard that. No, oh, this is not going to be yeah. as impressive then. When I tell you, I thought that was common common knowledge. I think I've heard no, about it. in I've, movies and stuff. People jump to their death. Well, it wasn't true. It didn't, oh. it didn't happen. So I thought, I'm going to blow you guys' mind but yeah. since you hadn't heard about it. Not as much, but they heard, heard about, about it. it. Yeah, it's a common thing that people like stock, 
they or people who lost everything were just jumping from windows wow. to kill themselves. But, but the buildings weren't that tall back then. <laughs> yeah. So it's all good. A lot but, of sprained ankles. <laughs> it was an immediate regret. Yeah, now they got medical bills. So they yeah. Can't pay it. Now the stock market crash of twenty nine that led to the Great Depression. Why are you limping? Yeah. Uh, you jumped out of the <laughs> building. The Dow Jones is down. The Dow you know? Jones is down. <laughs> the Dow's down. Not even the Jones yet. Jones didn't come along. The Dow's down. Dow's down. down. Dow's down. Well, cheer him up. It was a couple comedians that said things that made people think that. Oh, Will, really? yeah. Will Rogers uh, said uh, when the Wall Street tailspin happened, you had to stand in line to get a window to jump out of. And then some comedian, Eddie Cantor, said he just bu- requested a room on the 19th floor, and the clerk said, for sleeping or jumping? Oh. Those are a couple of jokes, and then it became a whole thing that people thought that really happened. Man. But it really didn't. I mean, now people say whatever, and the craziest stuff ever. Yeah. They wouldn't even ring a bell. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's clean comedy. Yeah. Very much so. Um, Bitcoin, when you talk about that. Yeah. Something I understand even less is Bitcoin. I don't understand. I mean, it's so, yeah, it is so complicated, dude. It was created, invented in 2008 by a person or persons by the name Satsashi. Nakamoto. Mm-hmm. They don't know if that's a group of people or one person. And it started in 2009. I did not know the people. That's a pretty good name. For a you have name. a name that could be you or a group of people. <laughs> like Nate like Nate Bargetzi, no one's going, is it a group of, <laughs> what is it, a, a flock of 41-year-olds yeah. coming at me? And you're like, no, it's a person's name. This guy yeah. has a name that we don't know. <laughs> if it's his name. Or is it a large group? What was it? Yes, I, yeah. Uh, Satoshi mm. Nakamoto. A group of people. Yeah. Means a group of people in... In what? Asian. So... <laughs> <laughs> you, do, uh, you do cryptocurrency, right? I have. I don't own any right now, but I... For How do you even start? You got rid of it. It was a good time to get rid of it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. when did you, you sell it? It's like I, great I, now. I had Bitcoin. I sold it when uh, it was about $9,000. Do we figure out now if you're... A, yeah, now, now it's, it's like 30. It's at upwards of 30 now, which at the time would have been... It, it just was insane to think it would what be What about high. your diamond hands? Yeah. This was years ago. This was years ago. Just before I got caught up in the movement. This is your gout foot now. So (laughs) you could have afforded a new foot. Yeah. That probably has just a little less gout. I would have held on to it. Still need a big foot. But so I, you, I bet you, you buy, buy it, it the same way that you'd buy a stock with it's just different apps. And that's how most people treat it. It's just when oh, did you like buy an, it the first time? Oh, three or four years ago. Right when you yeah. got how your was it? Planet Fitness membership. I was six thousand, five or six thousand at the time. You did this when Ralphie died. You did this and the Planet Fitness, and you held on to one. And you held on to one, the worst one, and you sold the one that would make you. I mean, you you you'd be a millionaire right now. <laughs> you wouldn't even be on this podcast. <laughs> I didn't put that much in. I'd I'd have more than I do now if I would have held on to it for sure. How much did you buy? Do you I, remember how much the shares, how much it was? Or I mean, I can look it up what it was. Yeah, the bit Bitcoin price in like two thousand eight. Are there more than just Bitcoin for cryptocurrency? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so. There's there yeah, there's a ton. There's, there's thousands ton. of them. Oh, gosh. Bitcoin just the one that people know about. Uh, is it sixty eight thousand? Oh no, no, that's um, sixty eight million. That's how much two thousand eighteen Bitcoin is. So one Bitcoin right now is thirty four thousand dollars. So I, I like, but a whole, but a whole Bitcoin. If you wanted to buy one now, it's like thirty thousand dollars to buy one full. Bitcoin. Yeah, but you don't have to buy a full. You, you can just do, buy why fractional. do people, do people want to buy Bitcoins like a full one? Is there any benefit? To oh buying? sure, if people that have that much money, yeah, you're buying yeah. a bunch. But you treat it like any other investment. I don't think. I mean. People are doing shady stuff on the internet. They're using Bitcoin probably if they're buying drugs or mm-hmm. hiring really? hitmen hit and that kind of stuff because it's all anonymous and, and safe to use. But I think most but it, people... But it, but it shows. You can see every purchase. But it's all encrypted. I know, but yeah. you can... But it shows like every... Uh, it doesn't show your name, but it sh- every purchase from Bitcoin, I think, is yeah. visible. Right. A blockchain. Blockchain, yeah. yep. So, but is it, do some of them say Hitman? No, no. <laughs> and you're like, oh, who did that? You're like, well, we can't tell you who, but I can tell you that there's been a lot of Hitman hired. Can well, anybody yeah. bring up a blockchain? Yeah, I, was, I had it up here earlier. So you can go through, um, 
I think it's just like the way blockchain works is like, I was reading about this. Um, blockchain is like a, you were talking about, you don't like the idea of somebody just being able to just yeah, wipe out your yeah. money. The idea of this is like the it's, ledger where all these transactions yeah. are recorded. There's not a central, it's decentralized. Yeah. So, so the three of us would each have our own ledger where we keep track of everything. And it's just a network between the three of us. And we all have to validate each other's copy of the same ledger. And that's how it works. So there's no government. There's no centralized agency controlling it all. It's all just us. How does yeah. the government value? Because the same way anything. Buying it. Yeah. It's just, people want it. They will yeah. start using it. If I open a store and I'll, I'll only sell Bitcoin, then that's going to count as value. Mm-hmm. Like that counts as... If I if I'm if I'm selling pins, you can only pay for it in Bitcoin. Well, then Bitcoin's <laughs> worth a lot yeah. in my store. Yeah, because I'm only accepting Bitcoin. So if everybody started accepting Bitcoin, then it's going to be, then Bitcoin will be the new thing that we start spending money. Right. Which I do think that that kind of a- aspect is going to. I think it's going to happen. Like, I just I just don't see people are becoming less and less trusting of governments, mm-hmm. and governments come and go and they fall apart and all these things. And so it's like it's kind of like our own money. If I own, if I want to sell you a car in Bitcoin, no one can stop me. Right. I don't think so. Right. Right. For sure. My wife. Who does, <laughs> and I go. No, you don't understand. This is. Uh... Yeah. So it says there's only tw- there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin. Yeah. Explain that. So the way Bitcoins aren't given to you you mine bitcoins and how do you do that so when you when you're a bitcoin miner you set up to uh, run the complex mathematical function to validate the ledger okay so if i want to set up my computer to r- calculate all these the the blocks in the chain once you calculate it a, a bitcoin is granted so there's just all these all these different people in the in the network trying to do that, but it was designed in such a way that it has diminishing returns over time over year. So like when it first started, if you solved the uh, the algorithm mm-hmm. um, to validate blockchain, you got like fifty Bitcoin, and it just decreases over time, and eventually it'll stop. I don't yeah. understand really into that, but <laughs> and then so the uh, so you're, you're the mining of Bitcoin, uh, so you can get some Bitcoin f- for free. That's where it comes from. Yeah, yeah. so you, you can either just buy it or you can do it for free, like mining. Yeah, but the thing is, it's it's incredibly expensive to mine it. Yeah, it takes a lot of just the power, like yeah. the electrical power, to to run this mathematical problem. Yeah. And you have to have super advanced computers. Yeah. So if if you you My back in the day, day is not going to do it. No, dude. Well, back in the day you could do that. Back in yeah. the day you could set up like your spare computer and yeah. just let it mine Bitcoin for a while. Now you gotta. There's warehouses full of these processors that are doing it. You yeah. Know? So you, you can't just the normal dude on his computer can't do it anymore. Unfortunately, that'd be yeah. pretty awesome just to. So when this uh, 21 million runs out, what what then? Hmm. I don't know. Because I think they're almost all found, they're right? Getting there, right? Yeah. I don't know. Then it would make them more valuable. Yeah, for sure. Because whoever, well, has then them. you would just right. figure out. A, then there might be a new cryptocurrency. Yeah. Uh, because if there's an end to this, then why would you not? Why would they let it end at twenty one million? I don't know. Yeah. Because I think if it had, if there were infinite, uh, infinite number of Bitcoin that could be out there, then they'd lose value. Yeah. Right? You know, if there were just dollar bills everywhere, then so who put it in that mine though? For you to, like, it's the it's the program, it's the program that does it. Whoever whoever built it, that the uh, yeah Sasuki. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh. All right. And I don't know. I mean, I sound like I I don't I don't really know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Throwing that out there. Yeah. 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 Uh, this says around twenty percent of existing Bitcoin, which is about one hundred forty billion dollars, appears to be lost or otherwise in stranded wallets. I mean, mm. people have a digital wallet. Like your, did, yeah. 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 That's the guy that, there was a guy. Do you have the story of that guy? I do. Mm-hmm. What's that? So there's a couple of different stories recently. One guy lost his password, and I think that's around 140 billion. He only has two left tries left out of Billion two. or million? A uh, million, sorry. $140 million he has. He only has, of this 
time we're recording, there's two out of ten tries left on his device, password device, to access the fortune. <laughs> and then, it's going to be impossible to guess. It. It's not like you're not going to be like it was Sparkles two four five. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be some ridiculous. I think it's a 64 digit. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, and I mean, he's yeah. got to find. You got to find password. it somewhere. Yeah. There's a British. This is also recently going on. A British guy uh, threw out his hard drive that had Bitcoin on it. He's a 35 year old IT engineer. He did this in 2013 mm. and just figured out that this happened. But he wants to ask the government to be able to go through the trash to try to find this. And uh, he still thinks he can recover the Bitcoin. He had 7,500 Bitcoin on there, which today is worth $280 million. Yeah. He threw it away eight years ago. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Some guy died. This CEO of a company, he was the only one that had the password. He died on a trip in India. He's the only one that knew the company's password, and they had $180 million in Bitcoin. So now there's a wallet recovery service that will try to recover yeah. it for you. They get 20% usually of, of what, you, but I mean, it seems fair, I guess. Yeah. But they help you recover cryptocurrency if you've uh, lost How the are they going to find that password, though? I don't know. Man. Yeah. You got to set up a kill switch, you know? Have you ever thought yeah. about, like, you know, all these these rich guys, they set up a kill switch? Like, what does that mean? They, they make a contract where they're like, if I die, all this stuff happens. Yeah. Just, in, just to avoid a situation just like that. Yeah. You know? So do you have a key for Bitcoin? Like not a physical key, but like a You have yeah, so it's, it's a long uh unique identifier, just string of letters and, and numbers and stuff. Huh. And you have a public one that people if people want to send it to you, they have a public one. Yeah. But then you have your private one that is listed in the blockchain and all that, all that kind of stuff. And so these people that lose their password, it's like they have this giant wait, this kill switch, you're talking about like if so like a wheel or like if everything, if you die, yeah, it could be like a will, but a you lever? Could just, yeah, you could just have something set yeah. up to where, like, yeah. if I die, I want all yeah. this stuff to happen. Yeah, because I think about that, like, sometimes. I mean, I don't have Bitcoin sitting around, but if I die, like, stuff needs to happen that only I could do. Plan yeah. fitness, right? <laughs> gotta write that yeah. letter <laughs> that only you can get. So you would let the stuff die with you, is what you're saying? No, I'm saying I, I should probably set it up to take care. I should, yeah. Yeah. Oh, are you talking about a my... will? That's what you yeah, maybe like a will. Yeah. Is that what you're calling a kill switch? Is it just that? A regular will? A <laughs> kill switch, like the metaphor where, you know, if it's if you die, flip the switch and then all this stuff happens. You know? What happens? But we think whatever you want. All your money goes somewhere. You can't yeah, yeah, that can be part of it. So that's a will. <clears throat> so that's all you're saying that that's what you're saying that you wish you would do. Yeah. But you're calling it a kill switch. Well, here's an example. If I was blackmailing you, yeah, and and I thought you might kill me, I would set up a kill switch where if I were to die, then all yeah. that stuff would be released yeah. or whatever. That's like a kill switch. Yes. Okay. That and that would be the appropriate time to use it if you were in some <laughs> type of situation like that. Now, just for your regular life of your, I, we saw your calendar. I know you got a lot going on, <laughs> but I can't imagine Capital View me. You need a kill switch <laughs> that sets off. You got to, like, let the Capital View people know, like, hey, obviously I'm not going to be here. I died. <laughs> if uh, everybody that's in the Capitol building, they go, how's our 2 o'clock coming? And he goes, eh, he ain't coming no more. I got a pigeon flew a letter to me today. Apparently the pigeon was trapped in a cage once he died, opened. And the pigeons flew until all my meetings were canceled by pigeon. You would like you're a right. wheel. Yeah, yeah. That's all you're you right. need. A little bit too we extreme don't know for what I got life. going on. You need That's a, true. You need, That's true. You, you need another wheel. I'd love to get to the level where I would have a kill switch. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a yeah. I, I don't understand <laughs> if you're, I think you need to be like a, in a James Bond or something, you know? <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what level you'd be at. Even if you had $15 million. I don't know if you need a kill switch. Like if they have secret identities or just secret stuff. Yeah, going on. Again, whatever. Like stuff James I got Bond. Going on, yeah. you know? Now it could be fun for maybe you do have a kill switch that sets off some fun, funny. <laughs> yeah, things. you could do something like that. Yeah. yeah, you could do some. Yeah, it's like you, you know a guy who delivers a package <laughs> and the letter that just says I'm dead. <laughs> Dear Planet Fitness, I'm dead. Yeah, you can sell a kill switch for them. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. 
All right, a little too extreme of a word to use for sure, but no, all right. I agree. It's, it's too. fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a word that someone your age, not married, doesn't understand what a will is, would use. <laughs> that you're describing. You want it to be cooler than you than it is. You don't want reality to set in once you get married that your life becomes boring and <laughs> okay. you're just, you know. Aaron, used to live this fa- you go use all these fancy words to just try to add, add some spice to y'all. <laughs> you know, just to be like, did you get the kill switch signed? And then she's like, ah, it's the wheel. And like Lucy's just sitting there going, Yeah, we signed it. I signed. Did you use my other name? And you have a different name. And it, you know the ink disappears. <laughs> you just have a book shelf that slides open and you can hide behind the wall and shut it. But it doesn't shut all the way because you're like, it didn't go that far back enough. But it could. If you pull this book, <laughs> then just one other book falls off at the same time. It's not. You know, you're like, one day I hope that I'll have the. But right now, I just want to show you that I am on board with when you pull this one book, yeah. a book above you pops and hits you in the head. <laughs> and so if someone comes in and tries to steal my book, <laughs> they pull it, a heavier book falls and hits them in the head. And they're frustrated. Yeah. You know, it doesn't knock them out, but they are definitely annoyed with the situation. <laughs> and you've been dead because of the kill switch. That's right. That's yeah. part of this kill, kill switch has been activated. Obviously, they've already killed you, <laughs> and they're coming to get that book. Yeah. Um, future of money, which I think we've already covered, is mm-hmm. not going to go well for me because I don't understand anything you've said. Banks are going digital. That's already kind of happened. Brick and mortar banks will kind of go away. Everything's going to be more online banking. I don't. I don't love not going places. I, it's happening with uh, shopping. I mean, you can't, you know, I walked around the mall the, uh, the other day and there's just, there's not that many stores anymore. There's not a lot to go to. Think of a kid's toys, like Christmas, you're just not buying. Yeah. Everything's online. Everything's, uh, you know, like Toys R Us is not there. Like that was fun to go take, you know, you go Target, Target's the only place. And I mean, Target is packed. Mm-hmm. Target's always packed. People need to go get stuff and you know grocery stores obviously but as far as buying clothes and that kind of stuff i mean no one's you're just not doing it anymore and i I still like going to see something do you guys still go to the bank uh i i mean unless laura does laura i don't know laura (laughs) do we go to the bank is she right there she's at the bank she's yeah uh yeah i don't know (laughs) if we uh I've been to the bank. No, I tried to go to the ATM this weekend, actually, and my card said no. <laughs> She's changed it. My card went, yeah. I think we switched, like, accounts, and so I don't have the new card. Yeah. And I put it in. They said said no. I mean, I, was, I, I still get checks from comedy clubs, but yeah. do, I figured you probably took a picture of it and sent it in digitally. I still uh, physically go into the bank. I went to the bank today and did that through the drive through Okay. Just yeah. with checks. Yeah. Yeah. If it's on the way... I don't mind going yeah. in there and doing it. People at the bank are always nice. Yeah, you know? it's yeah, it's a nice experience. We I like using uh, the thing. Yeah, yeah, the thing, <laughs> the, the, the thing that shoots up. I, do you know what that's called? I don't know what you're talking about. You know, the, the thing, the, the kill thing, switch, <laughs> the uh, tube. Oh, <laughs> the tube thing. Yeah, I like using that. Yeah, your mom used to work at a bank, didn't she? Yeah, yeah, she worked uh, at a bank a couple First American a long time ago when I was a kid. And then Pinnacle Bank for a long time. Uh, and yeah, she loved it. She's talking to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fun, it's a good, if you, because Pinnacle Bank is a great bank. Chemical Bank, is that <laughs> sounds like <laughs> yeah, a, what Seinfeld. But Pinnacle, it's a, it's a great bank. It is a bank that you went in and they like knew all the people that come in regularly and talk to them. Yeah. I think it's people that are, have a lot of checks and a lot of stuff like that. I mean, I have to write checks for, like opening and stuff like that, but I mean now we have a business manager, so they're they do it. Didn't you have a joke about voting? That that's how you thought you did it <laughs> through a tube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The I mean, I can remember when you would get monthly statements in the mail for your checking account or whatever account you had, mm-hmm. and that's how you kind of kept track of how much money. <laughs> yeah. Before there was just online banking. I get mm-hmm. a we get a, a cash flow uh, email from like our business manager. Yeah. I mean, no idea what it is. <laughs> I look at it. I don't understand it. There's a cash flow statement? Yeah. So, yeah. Confuses me. Uh-huh. I just want, I think they should call and go, here's how much money you have. 
and they just and they tell yeah. you mm-hmm. yeah. and they go there and I go, that's it. Mm-hmm. They go, that's it. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. Mm-hmm. Here's and like out of you know because money gets so, is the, it starts getting so spread out. You got it's in stocks or it's whatever. Yeah. Like money's everywhere. Four hundred one k. Yeah, I, don't, I think we do something like that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't have any. I don't. I mean, we yeah, do we're, stuff. Yeah, retirement fund. Laura's like a, Laura's always been a saver, so she's a saver. So she's always that's been good. really good at saving. Yeah. And so, and we're going to hopefully one day have all the money buried with us. <laughs> it's a really good time. That's the goal to one day. Or you set up a kill switch Just and give it to sw- Harper after y'all. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We're do Well, yeah, we will set up a kill switch to go. And a, and a clown comes to her house. <laughs> the rating a, of the kill switch. With a, with a uh, briefcase. <laughs> and she has to take a fingernail off. She has to show that she's the true... The true, uh, what is it? Something that wants this, the true power to be. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. uh, robo advisors. People would probably sign up for wills more if they called it kill switch. Yeah, because that's I mean, a big problem. People don't want to go do the wills. Yeah, and uh, if they said, "Let's do a kill switch." If if you are in the will business, you should start. If you feel like I need to drum up some more business, it's hard to get these people in. Call them and say. Have you ever thought about a kill switch? <laughs> and they're going to go, all right, what is that? And then it's like, and then you go in, you, it's a will, <laughs> even says will on the thing. And you just, you go, wow, you can't say kill switch, dude. Like you just say that to him. <laughs> and the guy will, I mean, you would go sign up tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Dude, for sounds, a kill switch. That sounds awesome. If you gave him, you're like, well, stuff will come into place. Yeah. It'd be like, if and when you get assassinated, yeah. here's what will happen. Yeah. I'm like, oh, man. I what if I don't get assassinated, though? And you're like, when you die. <laughs> so they just always say assassinated. It doesn't matter when you die, but when you get assassinated. Yeah. When you get assassinated yeah. and you go, I will probably be assassinated. I got a lot of, a lot of stuff on my mind. People Quite don't like truth. to hear it. <laughs> yeah. uh, robo-advisors. That's kind of already become a thing, but going forward, AI-based uh, robo-advisors. Instead of having a financial planner, a financial advisor, or a stock guy, uh, computers will just look at your portfolio and basically help you decide what you should be doing. Yeah, the people that are going to the things that are going to take over eventually. You want to hear from them? Yeah. Here's what I think you should do. They're like uh, invest more in uh, batteries, <laughs> and then they start laughing. He's like, these idiots. He goes, hey, uh, yeah. Have you thought about uh, three prong plugs more? You stupid more. <laughs> and then we're just going. Like, right, is that what we're supposed to do? And making them stronger. <laughs> I'd get some uh, oil to squirt <laughs> on the motor jet. Yeah. All right, I'll do it, man. I'm buy a bunch of it. <laughs> Have you seen some of these new robot robots from like Boston Dynamics? No. Some of these. I mean, every year they put out like a new video of it dancing or something, and it just terrifies me. Every t- I mean, they look like they put this up a month. I mean, they look like people, dude. I feel like you said Boston Dynamics. Like we all just look at that website. Like we, you go, you know what? I was on it earlier and I didn't see this. That's uh, the person that looks like a person. Uh, that's the robot man. Wait till it starts moving around. Okay. They can dance and go pick up stuff. And I mean, why are we building yeah, it's this? Jumping, yeah. And then that thing's going to be giving you stock tips. Yeah, yeah. Like, probably not him, but probably not this guy. Probably not that you can't disagree with. That's the cool robot in high school. The stock tips coming from the nerdy robot <laughs> yeah. that got picked on. And can yeah, yeah. This is the, the stock jock. tip robot. Can you dance? He goes, obviously not. That's not why I'm here. <laughs> That's and not it, what you want me for. Yeah, and but these are the ones that take over. Uh, you go to Boston Dynamics quite a bit. <laughs> they have videos restaurant? go viral all the time, man. They're like Tesla. They're like a big technology company. I know. I but do you think you would then go, guys, did you, you know, earlier I said I watched a video of a man crash a golf cart in the <laughs> French door. I didn't, I didn't go, hey, did you guys see the golf door crash site? You know, do you think you would just go, hey, did you see the video of the robot dancing? You know, that, that's what probably most people are saying. <laughs> and you go, did you guys see the what Boston Dynamics is doing? It's getting pretty nuts over there. And yeah, like, and everybody's like, wow, Aaron goes to Boston Dynamics <laughs> quite a bit. He's on their, on their website. Uh, it's part of his kill switch is you got to go to Boston Dynamics and fight that robot if you want to get his now negative GameStop stock. <laughs> The kill switch. The, the, the diamond hands, Aaron Diamond Hands Weber. 
that held on to until his whole family's <laughs> broke. <laughs> oh man! Do you think Lucy's mom's going to hear this and just try to get her? I out think of she this? turned it off a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm saying she might be like, "You got to get. Yeah. You, know, you don't know to be with this guy. He's a kill switch. He's bought. He bought GameStop at its <laughs> highest." I mean, maybe the worst time ever to buy GameStop. It's a joke that they're trying to break the system. He bought Bitcoin at its lowest. Bit, Bitcoin at its lowest and sold it at its mid, the low to middlest. Not even the same oh, day man. as Planet it's Fitness. It's down $100 today. Yeah. All right. Oof. You got a diamond hands. You're going to hold on. Diamond hands and gout foot. Hmm. What, how high can it go? Uh, theoretically, it can go, go trillion dollars. What's the highest a stock's ever gone? So Robinhood was saying they had to stop I, because they just couldn't. They didn't have the money to. Yeah, back hold it. on. Look up the. Yeah. Look how, I want to say it's war, the stock for Warren Buffett, one of his funds. That's it's like three hundred three hundred thousand something dollars a share. Like how often do they get up that high? So all right, so Bitcoin's at thirty eight thousand. So like how I wonder how often is stuff getting up that high where they're getting is you know like so if you do buy it at three twenty five. Mm-hmm. Is not and not saying specific GameStop, but if you buy a stock and say it's three twenty five, is like how often are stocks getting up to thirty thousand? Like you know where well, where GameStop well, is worth buying. Yeah, Bitcoin wasn't a stock. Yeah, um, yeah, but it uh, it depends on how many shares you make available too. Yeah, you could have a You're twice as like what's one share? What's the biggest? Well, I'm saying if he bought it at three twenty five, yeah. how often is it? Do stocks go up to three hundred and twenty thousand? Like, you know, is it that often or is it never? Are they always around four or five hundred? And that's about it. Well, it depends. I mean, I average. Don't, I don't, it depends on how many they have. You could have way fewer yeah. shares available and then they're going to be more expensive. But if you have millions of millions, that can be it's like a cent. Yeah. You know? So it just depends. Warren Buffett's, his Ber- Berkshire Hathaway. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, there you go, Brian. Mm-hmm. $320,000 per share. You know? So if you got that as, I, I mean, what, what could you at. ever, yeah, what, what did it start at? What, like, yeah, if you bought that. I don't know. If you bought a dollar, if the share was $1, yeah. that means that share would be worth $320,000. So if someone, right, that's essentially exactly what it is. Yeah. And so whatever you buy the share at, and then more it goes up is the, how much money you've made off of you it. You can sell it for, yeah. Yeah. Who are you selling it to? You know, that's the, <laughs> yeah. Who? Is who are we selling? It? Like, who could you sell that? Why would someone be like, I don't want to buy it from you? Like, if you go, yeah. if you bought that for a dollar and it was up to three hundred twenty thousand dollars, and you go, I want to sell. <clears throat> Who's goes perfect? Mm-hmm. I'd Somebody love who it. thinks mm. it's going to keep going up. Yeah, and they'll sell it for. There's no turn. way. There's no way that, it, that someone's going to keep thinking. That they, there, there's, there's got to be a point that it would stop. Well, sure. So, but like, that's might... what I mean. Like, who are you selling it to? But there was probably somebody at two hundred thousand that bought it does the company got to give you the money back what do you mean like if you have you bought that stock at one dollar yeah. and it went to three hundred twenty thousand dollars yeah that, and then you go i want out oh and then you just can't get anyone to buy it how many yeah. yeah like who would buy it if you go i want out no well then it's actually worth worth less than that it's worth as much as somebody's willing to pay for it you know, so this, you're like, I, you're like, I want to sell it for three hundred twenty thousand dollars. They're like, I'll buy it for two hundred thousand. Yeah, then then it's only worth two hundred thousand. Yeah, but I mean, so if someone made a billion dollars on the stock, I mean, no one they could just be like, no one's gonna give them the money or billion or like these these GameStop guys that made up forty eight million dollars. Yeah, but you don't really Who's make it until sell you sell it. Well, no, no, you know, if it dropped, then he he'll have to sell it at the lower price. I know, yeah. but so what did they say? So if that guy wants to sell that stock, he made forty eight million. Yeah, and say he wants to get some of that money out, and he's got that GameStop stock all the way to the top. Mm-hmm. He's got to get someone to say agree to buy it. Yeah. So, what if they go? Well, no one buy it. Like essentially, that's what the the stock people are doing. Because mm-hmm. I mean, other people that are making the stock go up, none of those people can afford forty million dollars. Yeah. And so you'd have to give them forty million dollars cash, basically. You you transfer whatever. Well, it's only worth that much money because it's it can be sold for that amount. Yeah. To other people. Yeah. You know. I know it's like I just like who would ever. You know what I mean? Like with that stock, is like I don't, why would someone buy that? You're going. I don't believe. I believe it's a waiting game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's so, when it starts going down. 
Yeah. Like, I mean, how are those guys lo- – oh, the guys, because they shorted it, so they bought it. Right. They bet on it to fail. Yeah. And all these guys jumped in and, yeah. and increased the price. So that's yeah. how they're losing money. And, so, and then they have to give that money. Yeah. So the, the guy doesn't really care about getting up to $48 million probably. He wants them to lose billions. Yeah. And they, and they are, are losing. They are losing. Because they have to pay – you do have to pay they them. got to pay them back, yeah. They have to – who are they paying back? The, the people, people that they shorted the shares from. That yeah. they borrowed the shares from to short. Yeah. Yeah. Which could be anybody. Yeah. Someone goes, I have it. Oh, can I short? So if <laughs> like if you had it and I go, I want to short this, I could ask you and you give it I to don't me. think I don't know if you go to people. I'm not entirely sure how that I don't think you yeah. go to people directly, but you yeah. you just yeah, that's how it works. It's like, uh, yeah, it's all just words. Uh huh. That's it what all, this feels to me. It just feels like it's all. I feel words. like, yeah, I feel less confident at all. That it feels all fake to me. Yeah. And I think it is at some level. Yeah, they 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 could just go. Yeah. Why do we? Yeah, we're not getting <laughs> to the bottom of this. But you're like, why do we even have it? And then it's like, I don't know. Dude. It's like anything. You just talk it, do enough that you're like. Other that we've been talking this whole, and you're back to your original thesis, <laughs> which is like, dude, do we even need stocks? Do we even at all? need it? <laughs> do we even need it? Is it, is it, I think it gets to show you, but why not just have numbers that show you how good a company's doing? Like, be like, their sales, their sales percentage means this company's doing really good. And you go, I'll go shop at that company and buy their stuff because most people are buying their stuff. Yeah. It feels like it's a game that was invented outside of the, the other stuff. Yeah. It does feel that way. So. I feel we're, the comments we will get, I will be making crazy sense about one thing. And it'll be, it'll be you got to mine through the nonsense that I've spouted. <laughs> yeah. But there's going to be something. Someone's going to be like, that's. Yeah. I did nail, nail something. Head. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> maybe it's the kill switch. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is more future of money. Ca- cashless society, Sweden already now, 98% of their country's uh, transactions is digital. So they're almost already wow. completely. Uh, cashless. Most developed countries are going way, you know, there's some less developed countries that are still more using gold. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Physical money, things like that. So uh, data-driven currency, I don't understand this really. I understand buying data, but some people, they're saying data will be used as currency. 50% of the top 10 companies are now data platform. You're not, they're not, people aren't making things anymore. Data is the new oil, it says. Mm-hmm. You go back 10 years ago, companies made products and services. Now the top t- companies are Google, Facebook, Alibaba. And so it's a shift from the yeah. market value to data. If you made up Alibaba, I would believe that. <laughs> I've never heard of that. What is Alibaba? That's one of the top countries and co- companies in the world. It's Co- a, I know. Is it like Chinese Amazon? Yeah. 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 If you, do you know what it is? <laughs> I, don't, I never, let's go to it. Yeah. Alibaba. Uh, I yeah, like data mm. seems weird too. It's like it's going to be hard to everybody to wrap their head around. That's why all this stuff, money is like going off of now, just like ideas. Like if the oil is like you at least know it does something, and it's it's how we do this. Mm. And so data like ends up, it's going to end up being like uh, this is not what this I is want. inappropriate. Dude. <laughs> this is Aaron. This uh, is a family podcast. Yeah. Ali Baba. You went to her Alibaba.com, a girl named Ali Baba, who just did not who didn't mommy. ask for this. Is I mean that's you know oh, Ali Baba. I think you had it right though. Ali Baba group. It does, yeah. Uh mm. so like yeah, it's all but it's all like it's gonna be hard. You're gonna have to get my generation. Even probably, you know, I mean, my daughter's generation will probably somewhat get it. Even her kids are probably going to be before you need us out of the way because we're yeah. just, we still yeah don't, we won't be able to wrap you. You're, you're part of it. I think you got to go too. You won't, it's going to get too, too crazy. Oh yeah. No, I already, you have too many it's already signs. slipping away. Yeah. yeah. You have too many like old things. You know what it's like to write a check Yeah, or to write. I mean, I don't know if they're ever going to need to write something. Signatures, you never your signature will only be on like you know it's like DocuSign or that kind of. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna, I mean, pin. There's not gonna be a reason for it. Why would you need it? Yeah, you're never gonna be doing it. It's all gonna be electronic. So the idea, you know, that's really and a interesting. pin would be you a just thing. Never even have to teach kids how to write with a pen. No, It'll just be a skill that never. Uh, learn. I mean, think about like if you would have invested in pins, if you could just in, in the broad stroke. 
of pins. Yeah. You would be like, yeah, dude, where would they ever go? Right. And now you're seeing it more and more. You're like, I don't, yeah. you know, outside of the fact that I wrote onions and wiki page on that <laughs> and I write my set list out on a note card. I mean, I'm not touching a pin. I mean, I, I still sign stuff, but I'm doing some DocuSign stuff now. I'm not even like that's, you can kind of do that a little bit more. So that's going to just become more and more and more that, I mean, I think in my, I think mm -hmm. in 10 years, yeah. It could be, I have a pen just for my notes on my standup. Yeah. And that, that's it. And because I, and I just, because I like it. Mm -hmm. Do you think a, do you think a, a comedian could be automated one day? Like, you're no, no longer... I think people want, I, you know, the people talk about like experiences, like, you know, cause there is saying is you, you go to the store now and computers are gonna be able to kind of do everything, mm -hmm. but we're still human beings and we still like entertainment. Like, so an, an idea of an actor that can be, uh, you still want to see Tom Cruise or mm -hmm. you still like, there's people, you, that's what we like. You, that can't go away. You're not going to take that away. I mean, there was a movie last night. I didn't watch it with Bruce Willis. I saw the trailer and it's the idea that it's all surrogates walking around. Oh yeah. 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 I think it's called surrogates. Yeah. Right. And so you lay in it and you live in a virtual. So you basically don't ever leave your house. But I mean, you, you can't survive as a human. You're going to just die super young, realistically. Like you're, you're, the age will go down because you need to be out. The sun, is, well, the sun is what the vitamin we need. That's pretty crazy. You know, yeah. you're just built for all this stuff. So I, some jobs, I mean, we could work our ways out of jobs where we'll be in big trouble because like yeah. then, you go get farmers like there's no you know you're like well they just have robots all that kind of stuff could they I'm have saying, to if you change. could if you could program a robot to write jokes and do stand up i mean you might yeah. be able to but uh you don't want no one wants stuff too perfect yeah, yeah. too perfect is uncomfortable yeah. makes people uncomfortable and i think if you wrote if you had a robot that wrote jokes uh it's going to get too perfect and it gets too like maybe figures some way out and it gets I think people like seeing mistakes because yeah. everybody makes mistakes and mistakes makes it seem real. And then mm. that's what makes people come back to it. So I think if it felt too perfect, it'd yeah. be yeah. too much of a problem. It, I, now, I don't think we would ever deal with that. I don't, you know, oh, you know right, I think right, people right. want shows and people want, you want live shows. I mean, you know, I, but live shows are going to be tougher and tougher because people don't, you're getting, you know, you get YouTubers and now they're all making this stuff. Well, these people want to go see them as a live show. They don't know how to do a live show. They don't do live shows. So I think the aspect of this is, I don't know if it's talking about the same thing, but the idea of live shows could even go down just because these people can't do them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And well, so I'm going to go sure. watch it. The human experience, like our personal issues, that's what people find funny. Yeah. And a robot, I mean, I just can't imagine even if the joke was told the same, they would connect with it. Hmm. But there are some comedians where their jokes are, it's basically math, you know, where it's just like. Yeah, I think that. But yeah, I mean, yeah. like, yeah, you could have a, you know, Stephen Wright, like a one-liner. Yeah. Right. Something. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. A robot couldn't do like what you do. Yeah. But, but just straight up, just like an algorithm of a joke they could figure yeah, out. Yeah. I mean, memes are essentially. That. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that's kind of, they've got that so fine-tuned. It's so short of a thing that they figured out some kind of thing for that it makes you laugh but i think seeing a live i think experiencing something is still that's why experiences i feel like are going up and will always go up because yeah. people want to experience things i mean that's what people are, want to purchase more than anything else yeah an actual experience and go see something yeah i think you know i mean they can't right now but yeah you know so one more feature of money that's being discussed universal basic income uh some u.s cities are testing this out now obviously andrew yang proposed this when he ran for president last year now he's running for mayor in new york his proposal is everybody every adult i guess gets a thousand dollar check every month that was the when he ran for president thousand dollar check every month his argument is that everything's going automated like you just mm -hmm. said and that a fourth of the jobs are going to be lost uh, to automation in the next few years so people are going to need some type of basic income just to survive Criticism is it's really expensive. <laughs> and, yeah. And, and it, everybody just gets $1,000 a month. Uh-huh. Every, every U.S. citizen 18 and up, we get $1,000 a month. Um, if everybody does it, then I will do it. Yeah. <laughs> that's the, if everybody agrees to do it. Yeah. Is Andrew Yang, that's the, that's the, this, would he agree to do that? 
do what? Like that means everybody like he that Andrew Yang gets no more money. He just gets a thousand dollars a month from here on out. No, this is a thousand dollars the government gives you every month. No, no, no. It's it's in addition. To oh, in addition you to your job. Oh, yes, yes. But yeah, yeah it could be. Oh, it's that's just the amount he ran on. But in theory, yeah. it could be. It could yeah, be anything. Right? That's just what yeah. he ran on. But mm. now cities are trying this, where people, mm. have, you know, it's try to cut back on poverty. I mean, one of the argument is it would give you less incentive to try to work. It's just like yeah. anything. There's pros and cons of it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, there's more talk as automation comes on and takes people's jobs that yeah. some type of basic income yeah. is something that... Yeah, I mean, if you get to that mm-hmm. point where everything's taken away, yeah, then, then maybe they would be... have nothing to do. Yeah, like, I'd love yeah. to work, but I got... But then you're almost like, why do you even need money? You're like, we're all just, you know, you're back to the trade and yeah. barter thing, and shaving off gold. <laughs> it all comes back to, to go. it. You have to walk in with a your robot and a gun to its head. <laughs> Just get me my family back. <laughs> that's, your time. that's what he had to do. Fight a robot. Yeah. Could you beat a robot? Yeah. One from Boston Dynamics. I don't One, know. Could you beat that robot? <laughs> All you got to do is outlast it. It's going to bad. I think it's die. stronger. Yeah. Wouldn't you put a kill switch on it? <laughs> I would put literal, a literal kill yeah. switch. A yeah. little, but then it just kills you and you're like, oh, was, <laughs> that was literal. And you go, yeah. He was like, I was just having fun with you. <laughs> and then you flip that kill switch, so now I have to kill you. Yeah. And you're like, well, let me flip it back. And he's like, no. no. And he knows now. Mm. Uh, all right, that's it. Yeah. Uh, all right, well, I hope you... Uh, I we solved you it, didn't we? Everything figured out. Mm. Uh, <laughs> this is a different alibi. That was a way different website. That's Alibaba. Alibaba. That's the correct one. That's not the girl, Ali. So... Thank you guys, uh, as always, for listening, and uh, we appreciate it, and we will uh, talk to you next week. Bye.